begun yet. We'll dance on Tom and Head and I'll be free of you. I'll see you dead at last. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> That is right. Great. What's up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of the Nerdy Wordy Book Club. My name's Nerdy. And I'm Clarice. And this is chapters, the beginning, I guess prologue. Prologue. To the end of chapter 11 mm -hmm. of The Great Hunt, the second book. We made it to book two. Hell yeah. In the Wheel of Time series, Robert Jordan's classic epic masterpiece of fantasy, at least we think it's a masterpiece. We haven't read it yet, because we watched the show first, and now we're becoming book readers. How you doing, Clarus? Oh, you know, you know, it's, uh, whew, wow, we, uh, we left it a little close there. Because, why, well, because I finished re the reading at 3.30 in the morning last night? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it, yeah, we, it's been a week, it's been a, a week. We're, we're leaving for LA in two days, and we are not ready. Yeah, we're not ready. Um, but, like, this... Wow. Wow. -y. We also picked like a third of the book. Yeah. Y'all were like, the, the recommendation from the chat in our Discord was like, y'all, you got to get to like the end of chapter 11. Mm. And we were like, oh my God, that's, that's a lot. Like the, the reading will be easier from here on out. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. it'll, it'll be good. CJ, thank you so much for the super duper chat. Also, before we get into it, I just want to mm. remind everyone mm. next week, there will not be an episode of the book club mm -hmm. uh, because we're going to be in LA and we won't be able to do it. So you have two weeks to do the next chunk of reading. Mm -hmm. uh, but next Friday morning, uh, our reaction to the Winter Dragon um, pilot episode yep. will go live at this mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So if you want to check that out, also for the Nards of the Nerd Table, y'all are going to get the uh, episode early. So if you want to join and become a member, see that episode early, mm -hmm. uh, do that. And uh, CJ Bootwell, thank you for that super chat. <laughs> yeah, you can join as a member of the Patreon or right here on YouTube. Yeah. Um, whichever... You prefer. And for everyone in the live chat, just want to say thank you for being here. Please remember, we have not read past this point, so uh, don't spoil it for us. Yes, please. Please, please and thank you. Woo, so, 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 that prologue, though. Yes, I am the man who calls himself nerdy, and... <laughs> Miranda Moore, thank you for that super chat. Thank We're you, very excited Rand. for LA. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm the man who calls himself nerdy, and uh -huh, uh -huh. I was riveted by the prologue. I think it's such a fun mm -hmm. introduction to so many new aspects of the world. Yeah. I, I, I think at a time when, you know, we've only really met two Aes Sedai at the end of um, the Eye of the World, mm -hmm. and so for the second, or the third and fourth Aes Sedai that we are introduced to in the book, uh -huh. for them to be... Uh, that thing we can't speak of. Bad, the, 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 the bad guys. <laughs> yeah, and well, and it's so funny, right? Because we had kind of picked up on the joke of there is no such thing. There are no Black Aja. Yeah. And like, yeah. I was like, we don't oh, talk about Bruno. in book like seven or eight, they're going to mention Black Aja. And then the prologue of book oh, two is like Black prologue. Aja. And we were like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> the Dark Friend Social. I feel like, I feel like I would want to go to the Dark Friend Social. Mmm. No. Yeah, babe, I'm telling you right now, like, pure, people who are pure of heart throw boring parties. Yeah, but I mean, Every like, good I'd... party I've been to has been with people that I've been like, I don't know if I should hang out with you, <laughs> but I'm gonna. Yeah, but, like... Yeah. Uh, no, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I would want to, I would want to, like, the people carrying around the food and just, like, mm. glazed at, like, I'd be like, I am uncomfy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that even Boris is uncomfortable by that. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, yeah. even this, like, despicable dedicated. person. Yeah, yeah. He's dedicated, okay? Yeah, dedicated to evil. Evil. Yeah, um, it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Ooh, Robert, thank you Robert so Morgan, thank you. Yes, Clarissa's hair. Thank you. She looks I'm hot. Glad, I'm glad you like it. Um, But <laughs> I, I wanted to bring up, I wanted to ask you this. Yeah, He yeah. describes a bunch of people throughout this opening. Yes. Do any of them sound like characters that we've already met to you? <laughs> Thank you as well, Ryan. Thanks for the super chat, right, guys. This. <laughs> ah, I need to do my hair like this more often. Jeez. Um, yeah, so I wrote it down. Because <laughs> I was like... She take notes. I didn't think that like notes, any of them would come up in like the first chunk of the book. Because I don't think... 
I don't know if any of these people described are people that we know, except maybe the, like, Shinarian soldier, because... Uh, well, we, but we don't know who the Shinarian soldier makes sense, right? Because of what we are going to talk about. Well, yeah, of what happens, but like we don't know exactly who it was, unless it was it was one of those two boys who um, um, got dead. Yeah, yeah. Got Chengdu and played. Mm. It starts with an N. I don't even remember. And yeah, yeah, yeah. the Shinarian. I, I, but the thing is, like, is, Shinar is like a much larger area, so that could be a future character as well, right? T- oh, totally. It could yeah. be. And that's the thing. Like, I was like, wow, this prologue is so juicy because it gives us so much stuff to speculate Light on. Lightblinded Fool says, uh, now you'll probably never see them again. RJ never foreshadows anything. No, who's foreshadowing? We don't know her. But we do meet Boars, and Boars is told <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, to go back to the Terima- Terabon and the Almuth Plains. And what's so fun yeah. is that that pays off really quick. Yeah. As soon as the Aes Sedai arrive in Faldara, later on we are um, we, we finally meet Leandrin and Elena, yeah. and uh, they bring up the news of fighting on t- the Tarbon and the Almuth Plains, like, literally, like, yeah. three chapters Immediately. later. Immediately, and yeah. you're like, oh, wow, okay, great. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> um, also, yeah, we got to meet Leandrin, which I was like, I hate you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I just want to say the actress in the show, I think, crushed it. Oh, yeah, the actress in the show really feels like, like Leandrin. reading this. And Elena, too. I feel like... The, the two, you know, True. the yin and the yang on Moiraine's shoulders in those scenes in uh, episode, I think it's episode five. Yeah. Um, and episode six. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. The the two actresses for the show, and obviously Leandrin is, and Elena both introduced earlier in the show, mm-hmm, but um, mm-hmm. seeing the, their interactions in Tarvalon really, like, shows their relationship. And yeah. I, I was really impressed by the Leandrin in particular. Oh, yeah. She's fantastic. Uh, yeah, like, just, I was like, oh, you, you <laughs> captured it. Yeah, she's evil it. Kristen Chenoweth. Um, yeah, 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 if yeah. You, you, you Although, a theater person. <laughs> I do, I do love that, um, Leandrin in the book is described as being, like, almost the, as tall as, or, uh, like, a, I think it's, like, a hand taller than Moiraine. <laughs> yeah. In the show. <laughs> no. <laughs> in the show, that is not the case. No, 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 no. Um. <laughs> Rosamund Pike is a l- tall woman. Yeah, she's, uh, mm-hmm, she's, she's. Perfect. Um, yeah, it's funny. They, like, mention Moraine's height all the time. Mm-hmm. It, like, yeah. never actually, like, matters. I, I think it's just to give us a sense of the world, right? Like, they sure. mention Moraine's height all the time, and it, it only matters because he can see over everybody, which yeah, I can relate yeah. to. And he's also, like, you can pick him Am out I in the a dragon cloud, reborn? right? Yes. Uh, well, we can dye your hair red, and then... I know, the it. dragon reborn. You know what I mean? You are you are the uh, previous, 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 previous... Incarnation of yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the dragon. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just so ordinary because there's no like one power in our turning of the wheel. So you know, it's just, you missed out. What can you do? What a missed opportunity! Gosh, darn before it. we before we get out of the prologue, uh-huh. I do want to I do want to stick with the prologue the for a minute here because the fun thing about the prologue is that the dark one is straight up like. <laughs> Why is this leaking on me? I don't know. Um, the dark one is straight up like. I have these selfies of these boys. <laughs> Gander upon these. Here's their social media. The, these holograms. I was like, what? Yeah. What is this power that you have that you can create? Like, I was like, this sounds rad. Yeah, that was wild. I was like, oh, it's literally just like, of course you recognize them. It's not like a weird like portrait. Yeah. You know, like you the wanted posters, and you have to draw them out by hand by like description. No, no, no. I would so love if the dark one was just handing out pamphlets that were like hand drawn by Trollocs, and the people are just like, "I know they want me to go after. I have no idea who this who, could possibly be." Who, 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 I don't. Hmm. Interesting. Um. Uh. But we are also. Uh. It is revealed. Uh. Like we kind of just knew at the end of last book, but we get the official confirmation. Uh, the Dark One's not dead, but Alzaman is very much uh, raring to go. Yep. And he's plucking at his people one at a time to talk to them, and everyone else is just standing there. Yeah. Like, waiting. Yeah. Like, all right. Cool. And I don't know. It just... It, <laughs> when I was reading it, I was chuckling to myself because it reminded me of being in line at, like, customs at the airport. We were just like... <sighs> Can we... Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. just pictured this room full of very powerful people just standing there like... Here, 
is he really not powerful enough to talk to all of us individually at once? Like, does it really have to be like a one at a time thing? Well, I don't know. It's really interesting, right? Because it, it, it definitely doesn't take place in like, like it feels like it takes place out outside of time in a sense. Like it, like it, it is its own realm almost. And so, is it the dream world? Well, may, may like maybe, but but the weird thing is that in the dream world, um, the dark one talks to the three boys at the same time. No problem, mm. unless I mean night when you sleep, you sleep for a long time. So maybe he actually can't talk to them all at the exact same time. I think it could also just be a power play on his part, right? Like he's like, yeah, you I'm wait. gonna make you wait. You wait. Shadow Link, wait thank you for that it. super chat. Thank um, you so much. The Perrin wanted pamphlet is just a stick figure with yellow eyes. Honestly, though, that's all you would need to find him because nobody else has <laughs> yellow eyes. Um, Samantha A says secret plants are secret. I'm not saying that everyone should have been given all the information. No. I'm saying why did he need to? talk to everyone individually one at a time yeah it just seems like a very time-consuming process yeah yeah no no it's it's a easy you you wait download you wait download turn. their individual information just do it all at once you know what i mean yeah yeah you can like highlight a bunch of files and upload them to google drive <laughs> at the same time that's that's how this works uh yeah yeah yes no, the dark one is google drive confirmed yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. google are benevolent overlords um, Does that make <clears throat> Facebook the Dragon Reborn? No. Is TikTok the Emerald? No, seat? no. Get out of here. <laughs> All right, so let's get to rant because the book opens with uh, we, we, the prologue happens. Bad guys have lots of plans. Something's gonna happen in a lot of places we've never heard of before, mm -hmm. and we get in. We get into the book and Rand. Rand is just being Rand. Hanging out. He's still there. <laughs> wait, wait. There's, so there's... So so I, I have written this down. Okay. So as... We, we have to make sure that as we're reading the book, we can try and like predict who these people are. But we have, we have the woman and the noble oh, woman from Alien. Oh, we're going back again. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So we have the noble woman from Alien. It finally moved us on. She's yet. just like, no. I know. I'm sorry. Wait, wait. We didn't talk about it. Um, there's like something called the flirt, first blood of Arid Domen. Domani Bloodborne, so we haven't got there yet. We don't know what that yeah, means. Yeah, so the first blood is um, when a woman becomes of a certain age. Shut <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. You're so clever. Um, uh, so we have the soldier. We have a uh, High Lord of Tear. Mm -hmm. uh, Lionhead Spurs of the Andorian, Andor Andorian Queen's Guard. Yes, so someone um, someone close to Morghais. Yep, and yeah. also one of the sea folk. We know that they have like a the tattoo. So, uh, if anyone's gonna join the dark one, it's gonna be sailors, man. Sailors, yeah. So, so those are the those are the people we gotta okay. like watch out for. While we're now, can I move on? Now we can move on. Yeah. Yeah. Are we gonna go back again? Nope. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, Lan. Okay, wait, wait. But... Lan is just shirtless on top of a tower, training this young man, and I was like, God damn it! Why? Why is he not wearing a shirt? Why is he just all like pecks out? You know what I mean? I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad either. I was just like, I did not expect the beginning of this book to be so horny. <laughs> um, and so there. Uh, there's a lot in this chapter that's horny, or not chapter. There's a section. lot of horny in this. There's a lot of horny. horny. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so Land is just is just training Rand with um uh <laughs> with play play swords that you whip each other with, and I was like, this is. This is so... I, I don't think they'll adapt this for the show because this is, like, strangely erotic. It's, like, kind of kinky. <laughs> yeah. Just two men on top of a tower just like... Whoosh, whoosh. Come on, get your guard up. Whoosh. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't I don't think Rand got any got any hits in, but... Um... No, but he's covered in welds. <laughs> he's covered... You know what I mean? Like, he, he's gonna... He's gonna have... A, he's gonna have... Mm -hmm. A complex about it one day. <laughs> hey, uh... Hey, hey, Egwene... Can you just take take this and uh, <laughs> just like just make the noise? Um, and so we we get this really fun uh, new relationship between Lan and Rand that plays out through a lot of this opening section of the book, where Lan Which is has really wonderful. Lan has taken on a very different relationship with uh, Rand in the wake of the news that he's the Dragon Reborn, mm -hmm. where he is acknowledging at times in this section that the Aes Sedai are not the best people to, uh, and not the most not trustworthy, all of them. <laughs> and that there there is a good reason to behave in a certain way around them to protect yourself. Yeah, and he really is doing his best to give Rand the tools necessary to participate in his own destiny without being taken advantage of. And I really appreciated that about this version of Rand uh, of Lan, mm -hmm. and 
you know, it, it betrays how intelligent and forward thinking Lan is in in addition to Morghese, right? Because the first book kind of sets up Lan as being the muscle and Mor- um, uh, Moiraine as being the brains. Yeah. And the, like, you know, the one power, right? Mm-hmm. But this is really setting up that Lan can, Lan, Lan has as much strategy mind as Moiraine. Yeah. And he, they're showing it through these really small actions. And I really appreciate that about Robert Jordan's writing. Absolutely. And it also kind of goes to show that even though warders like Lan are wholly dedicated to their Aes Sedai, not all Aes Sedai are created equal. Um, right. Mm-hmm. And and Lan knows this. Yeah. And Rand doesn't. Like Rand Rand does not quite understand that scope. Um 88, thank you for the super duper. 88 Cox. <laughs> the yep. sheathing of their sword. How mm-hmm. fun did you have with the sheathing of the sword? I love your take on the series. Keep it going, you guys are amazing. Well the sheathing of the sword sounds fun. Sounds until hot. you until you read the rest of it when he's like at some point you're gonna have to put the sword in yourself and I was like is Rand just that well endowed can he just like tuck it around <laughs> but no I I do the the sheathing of the sword is going to uh, it, oh it's gonna it, it's, it's, it's gonna weird be a because thing. the show mm-hmm. and I know that people want us to move on from the show but this check section really leans into the show in the show we see him do that right we see him yeah. sheath the sword in his own belly in the blight. Does it make any sense there? Oh, in the dream. In the dream. He right. literally, he sheathed the sword. We, we've already seen that in the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but he didn't know that that was the strategy that Lan was going to throw at him. Um, mm-hmm. But the, the, the sheathing of the sword in the books is going to be a sad moment. I have a feeling it's going to be heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It's going to be a moment. I mean, like, like Robert Jordan, I'm pretty sure, is like the king of foreshadow. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is going to be, this is going to be like a moment and uh, we'll probably cry. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, it was, it was interesting. And it was like the, it was like the last thing before Rand went on his way. And I was like, ah, okay. All right. So, um, (laughs) I got a horny laugh out of Claris. I'll take it. (laughs) Um, so Rand, Rand gets attacked by the wind. Yeah. I don't know that. Yeah. That one I have, I have no idea. Do you think it was intentional or is it just a random, like the blight is crazy? No, no, that would be too, like, that, that, no, no, that would be too <clears throat> just, like, coincidental. No, there is something, like, it might be that they are close to the Blight and, like, the the Dark One is able to, like, influence sometimes. But, I like, that's not going to be the last of yeah those kind of moments. And I don't think we'll find out till like, probably, like, at least the end of the book. Do you What's think? Do you think or that the wind is some that one else, or do you think that the wind is the dark one's taint? <laughs> it's the madness. Um, not yet. No, not yet. Um, El Grillo, thank you. So El Grillo, thank you for the super chat. chat. Uh, did you know the wheel of time turns and ages coming past was going to be a thing here, just like at the start of book one? P.S. Show chat good. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, El Grillo. Thank you. Um, I did. I did not know. No, no, I, I did not know that. Um, no, I don't think it's. I don't think it's the madness yet. I think that we have so much book to go, so many books to yeah. go that it's going to be a slow progression. Yeah, it's tough if he goes mad right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that wouldn't be because then they have to cure him early, and then like the risk of the one power isn't in like the second. You know what I mean? Like no, no they've no. got to keep the risk of him using the one power as long as possible throughout the series. Absolutely, I have a feeling the taint will be on him until like the penultimate book. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then it'll be cured for the memory of light, or it'll be cured in the memory of light, or something like that. But, well, yeah, or and that he might will end die up being a in the memory of light, saving everybody. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah, something. Um, yeah. um, so then we get um. He, so then the the Amalan seat starts to show up. Starts land like, well, hey. but it's a process. There's like trumpets and stuff, and the uh, land is like, oh god damn it, you should have left. Yeah, land is like, well, you're screwed now. And so Rand is like, okay, well, I'm 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 a, I'm a peace out. Literally then. runs, grabs all of his stuff, and tries to like escape from this castle. No, 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 he runs to grab his stuff, and the servants of the castle are like burning it. They're like, no, like, oh, you don't sorry. Need these clothes uh, anymore. <laughs> yeah. And we, we know why because of what, like, Moraine said later, but, like, to Rand, this is such a weird thing. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, what? You're just get, getting rid Oh, no, of- Moraine has decided that you won't dress like this anymore. I was like, God, is Moraine, is Moraine, his 
wife? Like No, no, no. Moraine is um Moraine is like the uh future version of Queer Eye. <laughs> Where she's like, no, 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 no. This look is not going to work for you. We're going to dress you up. Uh, I would love to I see Rosamund Pike on that show. Like, Moraine and Sawan are like the future lesbian version of Queer Eye. Just like... <laughs> I want that so bad. Um, Rock Crane brings up that he had a great pair of boots. He had a great pair yeah. of boots. He's like, well, I, I broke these boots in. I know. <laughs> and then he slips on... So he slips on some fancy clothes. It does not feel good about it. No. Doesn't feel good about it. And I, I would feel weird too. Especially. I would not. If someone was like, "Hey, I, that crap that you've been wearing in the mud and in the ways and everywhere to the through the blight and back, here's no. silk." I would be like, "Adorn me." <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I mean, beside everyone else, and like it becomes a problem with like Matt and. Perrin. They're also given fancy shit. Like here's here's the thing, Matt and Perrin. And because Matt and Perrin get all salty, right? Oh, God. They get all salty about how Rand is dressing. And I'm like, y'all know he did not choose this. Well, here's the thing. They, Matt and they Perrin get, are very aware of what happened because only, it happened to them at the same time. No, they only get salty about it because Rand is a dick to them to try to push them away. They're, oh, they're fair, not fair, really yeah. salty about it beforehand. It's that they think, like, it's getting to his head a little bit. Yeah, but they're being like, oh, like, oh, yeah, you think you're a lord now. And I'm like, no, my reigns gave him, <laughs> stole and burned his clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, literally. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, so it goes to, uh, yeah, goes to get his stuff, and uh, the servants are all there. And it's so funny the way that they, like, giggle. Like, the, the way that they, like, make fun of him, like, around him well and just the, just the relationship between men and women in faldara is so interesting yeah right so different like mm-hmm. you the you know was there there has been much conversation about how woke the show is in terms of how it portrays men and women mm-hmm. and i think that what's so fascinating about this early part of the great hunt is that robert jordan really did present an alternate view of relationships between men and women yeah and the way that it functions in faldara mm-hmm. in a way that i think is actually just carried into the show in in other places and not just faldara yeah but but the sentiment behind robert jordan's view on this is cl- i think rather clearly imbued in the show Oh, uh, yeah, 100%. And I love that there are different perspectives, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I love that it's not just the... the, the it, it just really gives the the world so much more... Like, you, you, the scope of it. I, I feel like I understand it more because people are so far away mm-hmm. from one another that they, they have their own customs and they have their own, like, ways of thinking. Yeah. And 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 the the space has allowed them to to have that right no. like you know we are all so interconnected with the internet that the there are different ways of, of thinking but there is like a general especially like westernized view mm-hmm. of specific things and they don't they don't have that and so their their own culture is able to flourish which is which is fun. Like I love yeah. in Faldara that that you know they they, they have their bathhouses and like the you know the two rivers folk are like oh gosh like what. To be fair, I don't want to bathe with just anyone. I mean, like, I don't know I've, if and, nudity mm, doesn't like mm, matter to you. Then mm. like it's funny like the like I scrub my back and or I scrub your back and your scrub mine kind of like yeah like thing that they have going on. I also love that they but, didn't understand why Rand was blushing. And then once they did, they were like, ooh. It, re- it yeah. reminds me of... <clears throat> sorry. Uh, it reminds me of when uh, they were Perrin was with the Tinkers. And the yeah. Tinkers realized how nervous he got when they danced around him. So they just kept dancing around him. Yay. <clears throat> uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's, uh, it's... Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's very fun. I, I think that the yeah. uh, one of my favorite things about it is the respect of the women's quarters and the men's quarters and how important that becomes in this whole section about sure. the women can kind of just come and go in the men's rooms. Yeah. But you, there is like an invitation process and you can't wield weapons in the women's quarters. Yeah. Despite the fact that Rand does it three times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Immediately. And and the thing, you know, that like, that he like sent for Egwene and it's like, well, we'll get her the message when whenever it gets to her kind It'll of. It'll get like, to her when it gets to her. Yeah, yeah like yeah. you have to wait. And I, <laughs> I think that that's so funny. And like even... I think it's Agamar, or mm-hmm. maybe it's Ingtar, who says, um, like, we, like, y- even if we think that the, their, what, their ways are foolish, like, that's still, it's their space, and we don't, we don't say anything about it, 
right? Like <laughs> it is it is funny that there is the like there is the the counter parallel to our universe where mm -hmm. there there is this like gender dynamic that is very different between uh, in terms of power structure. Yeah. But the one thing that is still true is that the men in the situation go, women are crazy. I don't know. We just kind of, we just kind of <laughs> like, let them do we it. Don't get, yeah. Yeah. They know what I, they're I doing. And we just, we just let them do the thing. <laughs> so Rand takes all of his new stuff. He bundles it up. He's running out. Mm -hmm. um, we get to hear about Amalisa for the first time, who we met in uh, season one of the show, but was not in book one at all. Was she not? No, she's not even mentioned. Oh, Unless I'm unless I'm misremembering, I don't remember Amalisa's name being mentioned at all. Um, and so mm. Amalisa is brought up here. Amalisa does not have the one power at all, no. but is an incredible warrior. Yeah. And I thought that was really cool. That's dope. I, I wish some of that had translated to the show. I wish she'd like had a sword or something, yeah. um, just to kind of keep that like part of her character intact. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> she had cool armor. Uh, we meet but. Amalisa in the halls of, uh, Rain starts to run off, he's trying to find a way out, and we're given Moiraine's POV for the first time in the series, mm -hmm. which is very fun. Like, we, we, yeah. we finally get to see, now that we know that Rain is the Dragon Reborn, Moiraine can kind of become more of a POV character within the books. Yeah, and which is very cool. Because of that, we get to see a lot of what happens in episode five of the show. What? What? <laughs> episode five of the show is um moiraine in the white tower and so oh, yeah, 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 because yeah. of because we're we, we we're getting episode five of the show as the first chunk of book two right because moiraine yeah. is meeting leandrin and elena not and, in the white tower but like not in the white tower but in the halls of a palace talking about yeah. the politics of the Aes Sedai, and we're learning a lot about the politics of the Aes Sedai, even yeah and they're even more complicated in the book, I think, than the show went, mm -hmm. right? Like, the reds are, like, fully on the other side. The greens are green with the reds, which shouldn't happen. The yeah. yellows are green with them. The browns are so oblivious, it's hilarious. It's all, like, super complicated. Yeah. And you're like, oh, wow, okay. But, but we're introduced to this political structure that mm -hmm. is is really is really not in a good place for Moiraine. Like they, not in a good place for anybody. They want they really? want to send Moiraine off with the Reds to be punished. Yeah, like because they say like you're gonna go of? you're gonna go take care of a garden, but the Reds are gonna be in charge. And Moiraine's inner thought is, oh my, they're so harsh. And I was like, what are they making you do in that garden? Yeah, yeah, all of that was very. Um... Episode six is the Moiraine episode. Thanks, Robert Parr. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, I don't, I was like, what do you people do to one another? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one, that one made me a little uncomfy. So I was like, I don't know, I don't, like, I, I think we're going to get to, like, see more of it, like, what that is exactly, mm -hmm. but, yeah, it sounds like it's just, it's not where you want to be, and. Um, you know what, Lars Kupers uh, and a, pub, a bunch of other people are saying that uh, the end of book one is a Marine POV. You're right. True. Yes, you are correct. I'm wrong. Uh, which is still after we find out the end is. No, it's the it is the scene. Where it we is find where out. we find yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is yeah. true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So we. Uh. So Moiraine, Leandrin, and um, Liana, or no, Elena, are walking the halls, Elena? and they're. Yeah. And, the... and Nate. No, isn't it? There's a there's Elena and there's a a, a a oh god. Am I getting her name wrong? But they're walking the halls. They're talking about the news. Uh, they're doing what uh, Clarus and I do on Monday mornings in the nightly morning show. <laughs> if you want to come watch a news show here on YouTube at 11 a.m. every Monday, except for the next two Mondays because we're in L.A., we do a news show. That's a little plug in the middle of uh, one of our other shows. Yeah. While Clarus looks, I'm trying to stall until Clarus has the name. Anea, thank you, everybody. Anea, in chat. yeah, thank you. I was like, I know it, there's Babe, men in the chat's faster than you. I, I'm sorry. Trust, well, trust chat. There's a lot of words in a book, if you um, didn't know. But they, they just start, like, <laughs> spouting off places. And I think one of the most interesting places, be, just because we already have some relationship with it, mm -hmm. is that there were riots in the streets of Camelin. Yeah. And, like, what happened? When yep. when did the... Was it after Loghain left? Because there weren't riots uh, when we left Camelin. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, It must have been. Oh, I mean, right, because they were traveling the Blight for, for a while. That's true. Right? But this information that, like, suddenly, like, Camelin just kind of erupted in violence after they left is was really fascinating. I want to know what, what happened. Yeah. Yeah, I took some pictures of stuff. Um, oh, no, I took pictures of Boar's um, 
what the visions he got was. That was it. I was like, I took pictures Helpful. of things. Thanks sorry, that's that. going back. I thought I'd, uh, sorry, I thought I'd. Take okay, so we are going back to the prologue again. Mm, we'll do it later. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, But yeah, the fact that like, <laughs> what? I'm just laughing at you. Well, we know that Caitlyn was like left in like not a good place, right? There were a lot of people who opposed the queen and the queen was sending off her kids to study with the, uh, at the White Tower. Yeah. And a lot of people are like not happy about that. So yeah, I'm sh- I, probably as soon as they left, there was like there was an uproar. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 what I would imagine. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so yeah, definitely after Loghain left, I'm sure. Yeah, it just it, when when we were in Caneland, it felt like things were tense. Yeah. But it would take like an event to spark things off. I mean, like, the so I white just wonder if are greater making events, so they probably did something. That, but I also wonder if. Mm, yeah, I I wonder what that event was. I wonder what sparked it off, and I wonder if it's something we're going to learn about later on. Because one of the things about the sequence is that they bring up the Taraban and uh, Almuth um, plane that comes up later in this section. Yep. So I'm wondering if the riots in Caneland are going to be related to something that we will learn about mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, later in the book. And all this whole section was like, you know, just foreshadowing for oh, keep an ear out for these places because the events later in the book you're going to want to remember that there was fighting here. Yeah, this book definitely feels like you could make like a whole map board with pins and dots and stuff, mm-hmm. and like this is happening here and this is going to happen here and we're going to meet here. Like it just it feels like this crazy puzzle this that is, is forming. This is also the section where uh, we are reminded by the uh, talk of Ilian. That the great hunt is happening. Yep. The many, many, many thousands of people are ready to hunt the horn. Um, mm-hmm. And we know where the horn is. Yeah, yeah, And so it is kind of funny because they're like, oh, it's it's here. They're talking about, oh, yeah, there's going to be the great hunt of the horn. And I just wanted Marine to be like, did, did anyone tell you guys that we have the horn? And then she gets <laughs> to the Amelin Seat's room. And, she and the Amelin Seat is sitting there with the horn. And Marine's like, got it. Damn it, I wanted to tell her. Yeah. Ah, it's gonna I be go so more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that moment where she's like, ah, ah. all right. Um, and so the we, we we get it. We get we get Swan and we get Moraine in a room together. All the Aes Sedai are like given shifty eyes, and then Leanne, the keeper of the knowledge of the Aes Sedai, or like the sec she's like the press secretary, I guess. Press secretary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's oh. the Gen Saki of the um white tower she gives daily press briefings in the oh white tower God. press room mm-hmm. she gets sassy with fox news um <laughs> that's wow. such a, that's that, that that joke is for my americans um for my american friends uh but swan's like get out i need to and, chastise her by myself yeah and leanne is like okay yeah. All right. She's like so sus. <laughs> I'm just well, gonna take my staff and go. And I like, I like the, I like the version of the book that sets up because it, it, it is echoed in the show where they're like, oh, the Amelin seat never sees anyone alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm, like it's mm-hmm. so rare. And yeah. in the show, they literally have to like sneak through magic portals to be alone with each other. Yeah. Which that one, honestly, that makes a lot of sense to me because oh, then you don't yeah, need yeah. to worry about people being like, oh, they're alone together again, right? You just oh, no, I'm not. I think it's I, I think it's great but, the way they did in the show, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that moment where she's, like, giving them, like, sus eyes. And then, and then she, like, uh, then the ambulance just, like, comes and, like, hugs Moraine. Yeah, because she's so like, harsh. Ugh. And then she's so soft. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I love this so much. Like, it was just so sweet and beautiful. But there is something in this book that is not in the way that their interaction is handled in the show. And I wanted to talk about it with you. Because mm-hmm. they, Moraine, le- like, levels the playing field almost entirely. She's like, this is all the stuff that I know. But mm-hmm. she leaves a couple of things back. And in the show, we're led to believe that those two are, like, thick as thieves. They do not lie to each other. Yeah. But in this chapter, Moraine is like, there's some things that you don't know in her in her head. Yeah, because like, she was like, I can't stay here because I, I there's things I can't tell you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't want you to think that I'm, like, hiding stuff. She needs she needs to, like, wait. She needs time. She's like, I'll tell you the rest in the morning. And I think that she's literally saying that because in her mind she's like, I need to go figure out what I can and cannot tell you. Yeah, yeah, I need exactly. to go spend some time. How do I talk about this without, yeah. like, sharing this information, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, but... But I actually, that is one of the parts that I just, I actually love. I love it in the book, but I love it in the show as well. I think what they did was, Mm -hmm. it it just, like, 
Yeah, it was so nice. It was so well written. Their relationship um, is great. Their, yeah, their relationship is wonderful. Also, Sawan, I, like, I get it. You're from a fishing village. But, like, if I had to be around her all the time, I would constantly be like, oh, my God, wait, are you from a fishing village? Because, like, every third thing she says was like, well, you can't catch a trout by putting a hook in its mouth. And I, I would just be... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, I have a friend who is always like, wait, David, are you Canadian? You know what I mean? I would literally just be like, yeah. "Wait, oh my god, are you, are you from a fishing village? Are you from? Are you from a fishing? Are you village? a? Are you a fisherman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> the definitely a lot like, of we get it. Like yeah, yeah. Robert Jordan, we get it. Well, no, it's. I think it's it. It's her character. Like, oh, I love, a thousand, a thousand percent. Like, I love but that. I would, if we were friends, <laughs> yeah, I would yeah. mock her you'd mercilessly like, for it. You'd be like, Can you, fish, fishing, fishing village. Just no, nothing yeah. else. Just fishing village. Every time, every time we would ride through market, I'd be like, "Oh, Swan, Swan, the Fishers, they're over, your people." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love them. I love them together. I love like <laughs> it just brings me joy. Um, especially like the actresses um, from the show. I think that yeah, they're great. Like they were, they were a big part of why I loved that scene so much. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think that the the the, the scene in the book brings up a lot of really interesting. Um, political problems within the Aes Sedai. Uh, mm. we, this is where we really dive into the fact that the Greens and the Reds are agreeing with each other is this really bad thing for the Amulet Seat because not good. The, four of the last five Amulets have been Blues and the two that have been forced to step down were both Reds who were replaced by, replaced blues. by blues. And so the Reds are like pissed about it. Yeah. God, the Reds are so salty. And I, I, one of the things I, one of the questions I have about the White Tower and mm-hmm. how this political structure functions mm-hmm. is that Swan brings up that there is a concern among the Aes Sedai with what is going on with the larger world mm-hmm. and how it's the White Tower, how, how it's the Amulet Seat's fault. And I guess my 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 question with this, where we're at right now, is. How much power do the Aes Sedai knowingly try to exert over other people? Outside of mm-hmm. outside of gentling men, which mm-hmm. the, is like their mandate, the yeah. Red's mandate at least. Yeah, how yeah. much power do the Aes Sedai consider themselves to have in other matters? And like, because the way that they're talking about it, they're like, you know, they're, everything's going to shit and everyone's blaming me for it. And I'm like, why? Do the Aes Sedai really like try and control everything? Is that what their is that their intended purpose? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. It's weird, right? Because I said his numbers are like dwindling, and 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 they're hated by a lot of people. <laughs> and so I don't really know. Like, I think that perhaps that like it's when you're like losing grasp, you try and grip harder, even though that's mm-hmm. not like helpful. Do you think right? it's that, or do you think it's the black Asha? Do you think? Do you think it's just? Do you think it's manipulation? I'm sure that is at least part of it. Mm-hmm. I am. I am sure that when we find out who the Black Asha are, we're going to be shocked. I don't think so. No, you think it's? They're going to make it obvious. No, I think it's Leanne. I think it's Leanne. I. I. I, I don't know why. I just no. think Leanne's going to be Black Asha. No. 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 Mm-mm. I. I refuse. I refuse. There is no Black Asha. Okay, if there was Black Asha, <laughs> I think it's Leanne. Was... Wow, that's a uh, that's spicy. Well, she just she's she's like the right she's in the right spot to be the most like if I was the dark one, that's who I would target. Not the Amelin seat. The Amelin seat's tough. Sure. You you target the person who knows almost as much as the Amelin seat does. You know, the person who's in the room but doesn't have to talk. Who's not going to betray but I don't their? Know if Leanne, I don't know if Leanne actually has uh, like like any kind of control or influence, or if it's more of a. It's ceremonial... not about control. It's about knowledge. If you can have someone in, the, in room. the room, yeah. If you can have someone in the room, then um, you have the knowledge. Mm, I don't like it, but you might be right. <laughs> it's I, I don't know. It's a, it, there, I have a feeling that one at least one of the. Um, at least one of the Aes Sedai that went to Faldara with, um, yes, the Amulet Seat is at is least, one of the two Aes Sedai that we see in the prologue. At least one of them, yeah, I, I absolutely think that as well. Um, um, yeah, hmm, I, I, uh, you might be right. I hate that, but I you just, might be right. It's, I, I feel like it makes what, sense. I feel like when you are going to introduce two Aes Sedai of this 
Black Aja mm-hmm. in the prologue, mm-hmm. then you sh- introduce 14 Aes Sedai in the next scene. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the implication is usually that one of them is one of them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think that one of them definitely wasn't there. Oh, no, 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 no. Only one of them. Yeah. One, I think one of them went with the Emerlin seat, and then I think one of them stayed behind at the tower. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think whoever the other one is we'll meet later. Because um, I was like, oh, I hate Leandrin. But also, making it Leandrin would be, like, too... No, no, like, Leandrin... Leand- you can't make it Leandrin because no. Leandrin is... Her own brand of evil. Her own brand of evil. and But Leandrin is... The op is is so extremely the opposite, mm-hmm. and I think that a character like Leandrin is important because it allows Robert George to say something about how it is important to be on the side of right, mm-hmm. but it is important to not take being on the side of right so far that you come back around to be on the side of wrong, right? And yeah. Leandrin shows that she's in the wrong. She's very much in the wrong in that scene with Amalisa where she uses the one power to. Tor- uh, torture Amalisa into working for her. Yeah, that like, was. She's like, I was. This is my literally her first manifestation. Like her first little trick of the one power was this like, hor- like horrible manipulation tactic. And they mm-hmm. were. She was told never to use again. She was like, yeah, fuck that. Like, I'm like, oh, you suck. Yeah, and that scene is. That scene is rough. Yeah, because I liked I liked Leandrin in the show. And, like, yeah. she had the opposite point of view from Moiraine, but wasn't, like, a, a bad character in any way to me. Like, she wasn't evil. She was just very, very much in her opinions. Yeah. And she, her job is to, ch- is to gentle men who are killing their family members. You know what I mean? Like, she has a, she has it rough. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas in the book, I'm like, oh, you're, I, 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 I hate you. <laughs> you're just willing to use the one power as a bully to get what you want. And that's not a... She goes, like, full at CIA. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, she's, like, waterboarding level torturing with the one power. Then that is a supervillain. Yeah. If, yeah. If you have that yeah. kind of power and you are using it against people who do not in order to just get what you want out of them, mm-hmm. you're a bully and you're a bad person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's definitely a lot worse in the she's, book. But she's a completely um. different character in a lot of ways. Yeah, but I think the the one thing that I did really love about the actress is that she captured that, like, hardness, which I think is, like... Because the show didn't include those, like, torture... You know, the, sh- mm-hmm, the yeah. show definitely she has... She doesn't use the power on anyone. No, the show has Leandrin just having a very strong opposite point of view. Mm-hmm. But, it, yeah, I think that the actor actress really brought like that like oh and i think that undertone to it which was really well done and clever but yeah the book they're, like they're different people i think that um, what the i think that what the show has the potential to do now because of the way they've set up leandrin mm-hmm. is that when she goes full book leandrin and does this it is going to be so shocking and it's going to have a much harder edge in the show yeah because leandrin in the book is just kind of awful from the moment you meet her you're like oh god i i like moraine so i don't like her right yeah Show Leandrin, I'm a little, I, I'm like, I, I, I'm, I get it. I don't dislike you. I, I, I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So show, I think that show Leandrin, when we have the scene where she does this to someone, obviously not Emilisa because she's dead. Um, uh, and probably not Rand. I, I don't know who she's going to do it to. Yeah. But when she does this in the show, it is going to be such a, like, shocking moment mm-hmm. that I think that they've actually set themselves up for a really effective scene in season two with her. Mm-hmm. Because it's going to feel like a twist. As opposed to this where it's like, oh yeah, no, she's bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and she doesn't do it once. She does it twice again with Rand later on. And it's like very... Yeah, but we emphasized. know that Rand likes it. You know what I mean? Because he's up on that tower with Land just letting him beat up his body. <laughs> wow. Just because he likes it does not mean it was consensual. He did not um, say, yes, you may torture me, Leandrin. Paul in the chat is saying Emilisa is not dead in the show. Yes, she is. Yeah, she got burnt to a crisp by the one power. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, no, she's, uh, she's, she's, she's dead. She's done so. <laughs> if um, they bring her back, it was bad, it was bad enough the way they brought Nynaeve back to me, because that was just all kind of nonsensical. Yeah, there was a better But if way they, they also bring it. back Emilisa and none of those five women are dead, and they channeled all that power with no consequences, I'm going to be like, what was the point of no, this? No, 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 yeah, she's. What was the, she yeah, has to be dead. She's definitely. If, if Emilisa is not dead in the show, what was the point of that whole sequence? There, yeah, and they, I don't think that they would, they would do that. Um, yeah, it was like on, like truly. It would, it would ruin 
already a not great part of the Egwene show. Egwene shed some tears and like, <laughs> she said, you know, she said, done. She got a um, mild form of face burnt to ash. Jesus. Yeah, well, and it sucks because like, ugh, she's such a cool character. But anyways, that's all right. Um, it's fine. Um, yeah. So yeah, so. Oh my God, we're moving so slow. Oh it's my God. 45 minutes in. What else know. happened? Where are we? What we're at happened? the Emelyn seat. Yes. Um, we... Rand goes up to all the gates. Rand is like, let me out. And they're like, and they Agamar said no. And he's like, that's weird. I well, wonder no. why. No, they didn't say Agamar said no. They said, we have orders to keep the gates closed. And we find out later in the book, it's not Agamar. Oh, no, but but they're saying, uh, he, Rand is like from Agamar. And they're like, who else? Who else? Yeah, yeah, I guess. But it wasn't like, like they didn't <clears throat> say yes for sure. And I, I when I was reading it, I was like, suspicious. And then suspicious. When, we, when we find out later, oh, no, there was only the <coughs> one order after like the... Um, the attack. To the keep one, the closed. one problem mm-hmm. with Robert Jordan being so effective at using foreshadowing in his novels is that anytime anything is written, you have to assume. Like, um, okay, let me. Because like, how, if he had just been like, "Oh yeah, Agamar told us to keep the gates closed," then the reveal that Agamar didn't would have been a reveal. But in the book, Rand is like, "Did Agamar do it?" And they're like, "Yeah, why would someone else do it?" And I'm like, "It's weird that Robert Jordan wrote that. I don't think Agamar did it." I don't think it was Agamar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I, mm-hmm. yeah. So that that was a fun little tidbit. Um, apparently, um, the actor who played Agamar has been uh, sh- shot for season two. So I hope it's. Uh, I hope. I hope. Hope. Hope that that is a flashback. Yeah. Because if he's just alive after that, I'm gonna just a spear to the chest. Mind. No big deal. Shake I, mean, it I off. will. I will legitimately be like. Tis but a flesh wound. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unless like. <laughs> <laughs> Unless the creator himself like saved his life somehow, I'm gonna be like, well, why? Yep. Why would you show him get speared through the chest and then just be like, nah, he's fine. He's nah, good. he's good. He's he's fine. His armor. Uh, Egwene cried on him too, and uh, he's good. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's strange. Um. So yeah. So Amelin Seat uh, arrives. Rand is trying to escape. He runs into Matt and Perrin. And Loyal. Loyal is oh. so sweet in this whole section. I know. And, like, here's the thing. Like, Rand is such a dick. And I get For why. good reason. I, get I why agree. Does it. I get why. I would do the same thing. If I was yeah. like, I'm going to go crazy and murder the people I love, I would disappear. You would never hear from me again. Oh, for I would sure. move to Cancun. I would open a coconut bar on the beach. And just murder the people in Cancun. What? No. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, you no. would go to the freaking desert or the Arctic where there was no. I would go to around. Siberia, and I would hunt bears with my bare hands, and then I would make a YouTube show, and I would call it "Bears." Nerdy gets wild. A bear, bear, bear hands bears, and I would like put on some weight and grow some chest hair. You and would then... just grow some chest hair. <laughs> I would will myself. <laughs> hey, yeah. don't show them that. <laughs> I love you. Uh, <laughs> hey, I no you. It's nice. It's nice. Don't worry. Um, I, oh no no no! <laughs> With the show would be called a bear 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 hands bears. A, 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 no no no. Yeah, bear like b a r e. No. B e a r. No. B a r e b a r. Yeah. No be no. A I'm bear putting, bear bear hands no, bears as is your my manager, new show. As your manager. I am saying no, because, you know, you would, like, leave, but we'd still be in contact. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would just manage all your um, uploads and yeah, yeah. <laughs> edits and stuff. Well, no, you great. can't know about it, because then you'll come try and find me, and then I'll murder you with the one power. We can't have that. That would be bad. <laughs> right, right, right. Only the bears can be murdered with the yeah. one power. Yeah, a, ha- a bear, 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 hands, bears. Jeez. Coming Anyways, to Rand is gay a- Pornhub. Um, <laughs> Rand, Rand is a dick. Uh, Jesus Christ. Um, and for good reason, but Perrin and Matt get salty about it. Loyal's better to forgive him. He mm-hmm. kind of understands what's going on. But then he runs into Egwene, and I I love this scene so much. Because Egwene is like, no, what the hell are you doing? Mm-hmm. Literally grabs him by the legs and sits on him. <laughs> oh, she fully tackles him. Yeah, yeah. Which is, which is impressive for a lot of reasons. Because here's the thing. Rand is a Rand tall is boy. Rand is a tall boy, but that means his center of gravity is like... Higher up, which means like knocking the legs up from no. under him would be easier. No. Yeah. That's not how it works. Yeah. Knock my legs up from under me then. Do yeah. it. <laughs> I dare you. I will. She tried to. Get, I will. She tried to stop me from leaving the room the other day. And I. Well, there wasn't enough room for me to grab your legs and throw you to the ground. Babe, you could not. 
you you do not weigh enough. Two of you do not weigh enough to take me to the ground. If there was two of you, I would still win that. It's science. Your center of gravity is higher, and so knocking the legs out from under you is easier. Yeah, if you can bring enough force to knock my legs out from under is me. Is that a challenge? You're a hundred and, like, one pounds. No, I'm not. A hundred and one pounds. I, like, I'm just, I, I'm impressed with Egwene's power. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. She, taking a large boy to the ground is, it's not easy. I don't know. I feel like this is a challenge, and I'm Barney Stinson. Should we should we move the chair? Should we see if you can take me down? <laughs> no, there's not enough room in here. You're too long. That's true. <clears throat> I'm feisty, okay? Yeah, it's true. She is feisty, but I would win. Um, so, yeah, she sits on him, and she's like, <laughs> My mama once told me, that men he... are like mules, but mules are smarter. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's literally what happens. Yeah, and I was like, fair. Yeah. No, it was it was great. Yeah, if you actually. have a good mule, <clears throat> good mule can do a lot of mm-hmm. can do a lot of good work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, are you gonna so- trade me in for a mule? Is that the upgrade you're gonna? Ah. Uh, well, when your two-year contract period's up, are you gonna upgrade to a mule? No, they're less photogenic. So, like, I'm not very photogenic. Did you see that photo Brandon took of me? It's it's beautiful. All right. Also, a mule can't hold the camera for me. So, like. <laughs> <laughs> A mule can't be my Instagram boyfriend. Exactly. <laughs> they have hooves. <clears throat> you Although can you could I... like you could like put like a harness on its head and then you could have it follow you and then you could like No no, I'll put the like gimbal that follows you just on its head. <laughs> oh god. Anyways, oh god. moving on. Moving on. Uh so Where were we? Uh, Rand gets tackled by Egwene and then they go and see Pat and Fane. Yeah, Egwene is going to, like, hang out with Pat and Fane because she likes stories of home. And I'm like, then go talk. T- there are multiple people with you from your hometown. Yeah, I'm like, Co, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Like, I, mm, yeah, so, uh, yeah, for some reason, they go see Pat and Fane. And I Pat just, and Fane is losing it. Like, he, she's like, some days are worse than others, but, like, this is really bad. He's losing that moment, go. but she says, like, he's been a lot better lately. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, because he knows he's going to get broken out. I don't know. Like, what's so fun about Pat and Fane versus all the other dark friends that we've met is that Pat and Fane is the only one who seems to have a desire to not be a part of it anymore at the end of book one, right? Like, he regrets it and he feels betrayed by it in a way. And he feels so put upon by the changes that were made to him at Child Ghoul that he feels like the the bargain that he struck is not as valid as he thought it was. Sure. And but so then... I think that, well, no, I'm just saying like, it's interesting to have him as a villain in, um, because he, he has these like, fl- you know, all, you know, obviously it's very Gollum-ish, right? The, the flips between the two sides of his personality. But I just yeah. thought that it's not all like blind dedication to the Dark One in the books. Because Pat and, like, all of the Dark Ones that we meet in the show all kind of have the same level of dedication. And so having variety, and, and we get it with Boars too, right? Like, there's a reticence in Boars in the prologue towards his relationship with the Dark One. And he's only doing it for the power, but he doesn't really believe, right? And so I think that the books are complicating why people are with the Dark One and giving some of these characters a... Um, regrets about joining the dark one or yeah. moments of introspection about joining the dark one that is really fleshing out all of these characters mm-hmm. so that the dark one doesn't feel like this like unthinking side of the world but is as complicated as i think evil is in the real world right. where there are people who do evil things that don't want to there are people who do evil things at you know moment of passion like evil is a complicated thing yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. I, I do appreciate that pat and fane is showing a different side of the minions of the dark as opposed to the people who are all stoic and like you know at the party at the beginning yeah yeah i think yeah that's that's completely valid it's like it's like in lord of the rings you know the the like sauron and like the orcs are just evil right there's no real like they're just evil there's no intricacies in there they're just they're just bad and yeah. like you know a lot of fantasy has that and sometimes you know you can make that work um and there are other interesting things about it but yeah having the dark friends some of them have like being able to see certain things from the perspective and them having doubts and mm-hmm. and seeing why they do the things that they do is all very fascinating yeah and so i just i like this version of pat and fane i like <clears throat> i like that pat and fane can be 
this 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 calming presence for Egwene at times, mm -hmm. even though she knows that he's evil, right? And I think that 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 speaks to just how complicated people are and yeah. how complicated our desires as people can be. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and honestly, it speaks to what Nynaeve says about Egwene to Rand, where she says, "Hey, I, Egwene has a desire to heal. Like she wants to make the world a better place." Yeah, and, and I I wonder if that has something to do with like all the other people around Pat and Fane are kind of losing it a bit. Like they're getting moody or they're mm -hmm. like like they're other prisoners but like Egwene is there semi-regularly and she yeah. seems fine so uh Shadowling thank you so much for that super thank chat you. orcs are just evil someone hasn't seen where there's a whip where there's a, there's a whip <laughs> what's that the song from the animated oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. god I That's... watched that forever the only song I really remember from that Frodo of and the, the nine, nine fingers, fingers and, and the, the ring, ring of doom, doom. yeah um yeah, yeah. That's, uh, what a bop. No, but I, I do have a feeling that um, it's Chengu and, I can't remember the other guy's name. It starts with an N, and I don't remember his name, but the two They the are guards. very clearly. Is it Nido? Nido or something? Nido? Nido. <laughs> Nido. <laughs> uh, they are very clear. I think it's very clear that they are being um, warped by the um, by the presence of Pen Fane. Yeah. I feel like he is seeping out into them. Do you think they were dark friends before Pad and Fane got there? I don't think so. Because even, no. like, because Egwene is, brings up the change in them, right? And so I, I do think that that is Pad and Fane's presence around them, darkening them. And I also think that it it is a similar concept to the dagger, which is why I think that Pad and Fane having the dagger is, like, really, really bad. Because it seems like Pad and Fane already oh, yeah, has awful. that effect on people, and the dagger is now just going to, like, amplify mm -hmm. that, right? And and it's, yeah, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near. So um, we, we do find out, so Rand is running around. We find out that uh, in the running around, we find out that there are some in Faldara who really don't like him, and he doesn't know why. We're going to get to that later. Uh, but I love the reason why, and we'll get to it. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, everything comes to a head at later that night when uh, the bells go off. The bells of Notre Dame! And the uh, the, uh, the place is under attack. Yeah. And uh, 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 Rand is upstairs. Um, he's just talked to the ambulance seat. Oh, we need to talk about that scene. With oh my god, guys, we can't skip that so scene. Much. Yeah, mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. so much that happens in this section of the book. Yeah, y'all, y'all. Apparently, that was supposed to be a quarter of the book. It's not. I'm trying there's to keep this in order so in my brain, much. and I can't. And a lot of it is like, and then they go upstairs and have this conversation. Then they go to this room and have this conversation. Yeah, because a lot of it takes place in the same castle. Rand um, walks into the Amelin Seat's room. Yeah. And is like, "Yo, what's going on?" And they're like, "Yo." Dragon Reborn, and he's like, nah, nah. Nah, fam, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and then, nah that's nah. a no from me, dog. Yeah. And <laughs> Moiraine is like, so here's how you were born. And I was like, why do you have this information? I know, I was like, wait. The whole wait. story of how he's born. I mean, maybe, I don't I don't know. I'm like, was that like, did she corroborate with like the brown Aja to figure that out? Or like, how does, how the hell does Moiraine know this? No, because the brown Aja don't know about him. Don't know about no him. No one in the ice that I know about him. Don't know about him, but, like, there's things, like, I mean... But she's, like, t so Tamal Thor, and I was, like, wait. Oh, yeah, he was, like, this person in the army and ranked up to... She knows Tamal Thor's entire life. Yeah, I was, like, what? Oh, uh, don't skip Rand's eye. Oh, my God, you're right. We're, we're, we're jumping, y'all. We are jumping. Before Rand gets there, the brown Aja... Varen, is that before? Oh, my God. No, no, the Amelin seat scene is after... No, I was right. The ambulance seat scene is after the attack. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because, no, no I was, I was right. I was right. And chat is throwing me off. Chat, don't throw me off. So the, the attack happens first. So that night, Rand is like moping about and the attack happens. And he's like, oh, no, Egwene. So there's fighting in the hallways. He uh, Egwene has hidden him in the women's dormitory. And he's running around the women's dormitory with a sword. Like, Egwene, control your man. And he runs past the Amelin seat and, like, stares her down. And everyone's like, oh, he looked at her. How dare he look at a woman? <laughs> yeah, that, oh, God. Yeah, and that then was he's fun. just running around wielding a sword. And then he runs into a fade. And Ingtar's like, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> you, Honey, go, sweetie baby. Go find, go find something easier to fight. Yeah, yeah, go find I a got trollic. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, Ingtar! <laughs> yeah, that was, that was fantastic. Um, um, so he, he, Rand's just running around. And he gets down to the basement. He goes back to the dungeon. And there's, like, so much blood. Yeah, yeah, just a massacre. And written on the walls is, I will see you at Tommen's head. Mm -hmm. 
Althor, and Rand is like, well, crap, and he starts scribbling over. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He's like, no one, no one can see this, that's my name, that, and, like, I was like, dude, first of all, First of all, yeah, I get mm-hmm. what you're doing, but also like they have like the you, the people here with have magic. Like you don't know that's gonna work. Yeah, and, and, and people course, are gonna find you tampering with a crime scene. Well, and of course, then Leandrin is like, "What are you doing?" Um, yeah, and, which like fair, honestly fair. Um, but yeah, then she like tries to torture him, and Marine is like, "Excuse me, what's going on here?" Mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh shit!" Um, but they do find Egwene and Matt, um, just unconscious, yeah, not unconscious, killed. So How that's, kind? That's nice of them. How kind, but Matt. Matt, uh, Matt, missing the dagger. Missing the dagger. Missing the dagger. Now, do you think that the attack happened because Ran named the Dark One? No. That was the whole, the, the, no. This is not a Voldemort situation. It's not. No, that people have, he's said the Dark One like six times at the end of the first book. Like. Yeah, but there were like, like. Feelings. No, I don't know. The, the the dark one was not like ugh, I don't know if I'm gonna break out Pat and Fane and get the dagger and get the horn. Oh, Rand said my name. Well, I guess then I'm gonna do all of these other things that benefit my cause. Yeah. I think that Rand. I, I think the whole like don't name the dark one thing is purely Rand superstition. I don't think that saying no, his name. No, the, 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 there's like like um no, there's a reason people don't do it right because and he like. Feels no, no, like they, the, there's superstition around it. No, no, he feels the, like, what, the, like, isn't it, like, a shake? Like. No, it's, that's in his head. There's no way that, like, saying one of the Dark One, any of the Dark One's names brings the Dark One. No, around. his, like, true name. But he didn't say his true name. Yeah, he did. No, he didn't. He said Baalzaman. No, he didn't. Does he say Shaitan? Yes. I don't know. I don't think that Shaitan is, like. Sitting there being like, well, I'm not going to attack Faldara unless someone says my no, name. No, no, like, I just, no. no. I, I think that that would be. No, that he make was any waiting. No, he was waiting for the weakest moment. And in that moment, I think that I think that naming the Dark One actually like has weight to it. And I absolutely think that it like. So you um, think that the, you think the Dark One just has people on standby so that if someone says his name, they can just be there ready to attack? Like that just that doesn't make sense. This has to have been a bigger plan. Oh, it was. It has to have been a plan. Days in the making. Yes, Pat and Fane was, was yes. working on Chengdu and Nadao. Yes. Like there's there, there's just no way that the Dark One was like had all of this ready to go in the off chance. No, it's that not about the off chance. Name. He was going to attack, but Ran named him, and there was a moment of weakness, and so he was able to just slip right into Thanos. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for so the much for super, super chat. chat. I um, didn't want to miss that. Ran sees a going hiding Rand in the women's quarters. I was like. You're going to be a great acid icon. Yes. <laughs> yeah, girl, get it. Um, thank you for the super what, chat. What, what, what part of the plan does Rand naming the Dark One change? The timing. Why? There is, I, I the, believe the, the that The horn was some... leaving the next day. Like, it had to be... Yeah, but the, it cannot be coincidence that it was, like, moments later. It is literally coincidence. <laughs> No. That it's moments later. There is no way Mm-mm. the Dark One had all of these people just ready to go, and they were just sitting in a ditch somewhere waiting for someone to say Sh- no. Shaden's name. No, I, I, like, there, no. There that has would to be, be a absurd. Mm-hmm. That would absolutely be absurd mm-hmm. because that would mean that, like, well, if, if so, what you're saying is that if if Rand hadn't said his name, then the the Dark One would have let the Horn leave for Ilian. No, I'm not saying that at all. The, 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 uh, Maha, thank you so much for the super duper chat. Um, I'm glad that I'm glad that made you laugh because uh, I didn't like it. Uh, but thank you. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much. Maha. When you in an when hour when you up. get to this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I think I think that the, the Robert Jordan does not do anything without purpose. The the fact that like that naming the dark one, it's got to be like okay, it's got like like we know like dreams work differently. And so Rand being Taverin and basically like the will weaves a pattern around him. Mm-hmm. That 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 moment has to have been like a fixed moment. And I believe like it was woven because like Rand was going to name the Dark One, and that, like, I think that that gives him, like, momentary, like, just, power and I influence. I don't, I don't, yeah, I, but, like, you, he was ready. momentary the power, there. but then why, but then it doesn't matter. Because the Dark One knows. He, he doesn't was, need power to pull off what happened, is my, is my point. Like, the well, we Rand, the, the Dark One's power wasn't a part of the plan. 
Well, we don't know that. Yes, like, we Pat do. We Fane, know what happened. Pat and Fane is literally connected to, uh, is literally like connected to the Dark One in a way that but we Pat don't quite understand. But Pat and Fane didn't do anything. Pat and Fane didn't need to do anything. Chengdu and Nidao did the dog gate, let well, everyone we... in, and then they are guards so they can get into the dungeon. They let Pat and Fane out. Like, Pat and Fane didn't, there was no, like, magical power needed to pull off what happened. They just needed people in the right place at the right time. And all of that was set up leading up to it. Yes, Rand says Shaitan, and then, like, things happen after that. But there's nothing about what happens after that that needs the Dark One to have more power. He's already put everything in place. You know what I mean? I don't know. I think it's like, I think it's more of a like subtle influential thing. Like I think that the dark one, if you like are a dark friend, that that when someone names him, it like, it like, I think it like weakens the resolve. Like, uh, like not noticeably for like the people who are like around you, but I think his name has to have some kind of significance. Otherwise, this wouldn't be a part of the book. Like, there's no way. Like, it's Robert but, Jordan. But it's it's just superstition. There are people who don't no, like don't when you say so. Satan in real life. Like, that 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 is a superstition that is common in, in our yes, world. Yes, but there's not magic in our world. I'm, but I'm saying that, like, what, what benefit... What change, like I just don't understand if there's this thing that has clearly been set up, right? This plan is in motion. Mm -hmm. Whether or not Rand says it doesn't change what happened at all, right? I don't, I don't think I don't see what could possibly have changed. I don't know, but I think that there is more behind this, like saying the Dark One's name thing. I, that there's <clears> no, there's there's no way that it's just like. And I'm a saying superstition. that like that is very Ronald Weasley of you. But as Harry Potter and the protagonist of this podcast, I'm telling you to no, stop living in fear character. of names. <laughs> stop living in fear of names. No, because Voldemort literally has a thing on the name where as soon as you say his name, he knows exactly where you are. Yes. Yeah, it's magic. Like, literally, you just made my At point. At that point. But, that, but that's not, that is not the function of it in the show. The Dark One knows where Rand is. Yeah, I'm not At saying, all times. I'm not saying that it's the exact same thing where the Dark One knows where you are. But I am saying that Voldemort literally did the same thing. Where he there was puts a, thing a curse on it later. Name, so, yeah. But people spent 30 years before that freaking out about nothing. Literally freaking out about nothing. Yeah, so? They lived in fear of something because they didn't understand it, And that's all this Yeah, and, and, and Voldemort used it to there his advantage. There is no way just like the, the, dark the one dragon can't say Shaitan. I, There's just no, no way. No. Luth Theron says it in the prologue. And guess what? He is already fucked up. So there's there's no consequences. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Like he's in, Yeah. It doesn't matter. No. I think I think it has a purpose. I think there's something. I think there's something there. Lockdog is saying that uh, saying the Dark One's name does attract his attention. The person can feel it. Okay. But oh, yeah. Shaitan's attention is always on Rand. There's no difference. And Shaitan, him, Rand saying Shaitan in like the, the upper room does not mean that like 55 feet away in the basement, someone is like, oh no, someone said Shaitan, I need to suddenly go evil. Are you kidding? Pat and Fane literally knows where they all are at all times. He like looks at them through the floors. And they, he knows that without them saying Shaitan. It yeah. doesn't make a difference to the power that he has. I don't believe that. All right, we need to move on. I think everyone is <laughs> tired of us fighting about this. I just I think, you're I think that wrong. you're trying to like make it something that it, you're, you're trying to think. This mm -hmm. is the problem with the foreshadowing thing I said earlier. You're trying to make everything a thing. Yeah. And this isn't a thing. It's going to be a thing. Um, Shadowling, uh, thank you for that super chat. Um, Thank you. I'm not saying spoiler chat this week. Be proud of me. I am Imagine really a set of scales invoking the name tilts them towards the dark one. Luce Theron says it and then look what happens. No, but when Luce Theron says it, all the bad shit's already happened. Doesn't matter. Let's move on. Um, Rand. Ra so Egwene is okay. Matt's missing the dagger. There's a prophecy on the walls. Do we want to talk about the prophecy? Oh, God. Blood calls blood. Yeah, I get. Oh, man. Um, blood I, calls blood, baby. Should I try and find it? Here's the thing. I don't think there was like a ton in it that like... Um, oh man, let's see if I can find... Tug the braid. Hey, hey. Uh, daughter of the night, she walks again. So we know that this is the... When they speculate, they mm -hmm. know that they're talking about the... Lenfear! Yeah, Lenfear. Oh my god, it's Lilith, right? Basically, yeah, yeah. Okay, y'all, I'm assuming there... Someone named Lenfear follows me on Twitter. Girl, why did you name yourself after the devil's daughter? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that Landfear follows me on Twitter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm not super nervous. happy about this. You should be nervous. 
But it, on the surface, I look calm and ready to drop bombs, but I keep stop. on forgetting what I wrote down. The whole crowd goes aloud. So I open my mouth, but the words won't come out. I'm choking out. Everybody's joking out. The clocks are out. Her Time's new up. Lover, oh, she back to reality. Oh, the group's gravity. Who shall serve her and die yet serve still? So she's going to find a lover. Yeah, Rand. You think it's Rand? The next serve woman Rand. No. no, no, no. Egwene and Rand get split up. The next woman Rand dates or has like romantic entanglements no. with. No. No, no. It's it, No, you want to know why? He's going to be Lanfear re- reborn. Because Luce, before Luce there meets Elena, or sorry, Ileana, which we watched The Winter Dragon, you know, we've already filmed our reaction and like, woof, we have so much to talk about on that yeah, next week. Yeah, next week. Um, mm-hmm. bef- the, the, it said, they say, Lanfear is the, like Luce Theron's first love before Ileana, right? Wait, really? Yeah, it's in the book. Is it? Yeah. And so the next, the next woman that Rand has a crush on is going to be Lanfear or Lanfear Reborn. And like, rant. You gotta be careful who you swipe right on. On Yeah, no, you're right. Wheel of Time Twitter. No, no, Tinder. you're right. <laughs> Wheel of Time Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Valid. Um, Lanfear Reborn. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They're, they're going to, uh, they're going to, they're going to have, they're going to have some, um, some steamy nights together. And then Rand is going to realize... Oh, you you was not good for me. Yeah, I think that they'll definitely... I think they'll meet. I don't know. I mean, hmm, yeah. Yeah, but it says her new lover she sees who shall serve her and die yet serves still. Which means that whoever it's going to be is going to, like, is not going to have a happy end. And I don't know if that's what they're going to use Rand for. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe it's Matt. Cause, so, okay, I have a question for maybe you. Maybe it's Matt. I have a question for you. Uh-huh. So... Rand is Luce Theron reborn. Yeah. So is Rand Lanfear's ex? Yeah. So, like, wouldn't it just be kind of going back to your ex? Like, that feels kind of sad for her. She needs to move on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, don't go back to your ex. You need to move on, girl. If you you broke up, you broke up for a reason. Yeah, exactly. Um, But it says the Shining Wall shall kneel, which is obviously the White Tower. Um, The man who channels stands alone. Um, He gives his friends for sacrifice. Yeah. I, I'm, are they talking about Rand? Yeah. The man who channels. Stands alone. I mean, there are more men that can channel, right? Uh, I mean, they keep getting... They keep getting... Two roads before him, one to death beyond dying, one to life eternal. I think You it's... know who should play Lanfear? Who? Jinx Me? from Arcane. Oh. Jinx from Arcane. The animated? For a second, can't be reborn. They never died. They were sealed. So they've just, like, been in chastity for 3,000 years? That's rough. I mean, they might be getting at it with each other. That's my smut corner. Y'all, all all the just Forsaken the... just, like, have, like, th- what else are they going to do in, like, I don't know, purgatory? They're, got, they're getting, oh, they're getting no. it on. This is the easiest smut corner of all the chapters we've had so far, which is the bathhouse. Rand, Matt, and Perrin walk into the bathhouse, and it is just a full-on orgy, and they don't know what to do. Because like, all the Faldarans are just, like, having a party. They're whipping each other with wet towels. They're, you know, they're, it's like a full-on, like, frat sorority party. Oh, God. You know, that one frat that has the pool that's like, we're having a pool party, and then it just, it's like you do not want to touch that water. Yeah, and you're like, mm. That is my corner this week. Mm-hmm. All right. Lanfear is Alexander Daddario. I'm in. I, yeah. Alexander Daddario is... <laughs> sure, I don't, I, I will have to look at that. Uh, you don't know who Alexander Daddario is? Oh no, my god. Are, we, are you about to Google this for me? Uh, We're going to have a live reaction. Oh my god. Which what hand shelters, what hand slays? Good question. Oh yeah, she's cute. Yeah, she's cute. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm uh, okay. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Oh it's man. Fine. Um Mm-hmm. Those eyes, though. They're so blue, and, right? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. ridiculous. I love that you just left the photo there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Um, Fino, uh, Fino says that I'm going to ruin our marriage. I'm not. Oh, no. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> no. We thirsty, but we thirsty together. So, <laughs> you know. Why do you think we always have so many beverages in our shows? <laughs> oh, God. Um, so, Luke came to the Mountains of Doom... He saw him at the Smut high corner. Passes. Land teaches Rand how to sheath his sword on the roof. I'm into that. Just two tall boys. I also uh, one thing oh that's God. brought up in this that I didn't realize from book one is that Land and Rand are the same height. Like everyone's like Rand mm-hmm. is so tall, but Land is also that tall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Um, the hunt has now begun. Shadows, hounds, of course, and kill. Uh, blah blah blah. That's a lot of it I didn't understand. Yeah, a lot of this we have absolutely. But no there, idea. the thing I really want to bring up is Lar Luke came to the mountains of doom. Yeah. Which is which is the son the uh, do, uh, prince guy. Yep, and then um, Isam waited in the high passes. I don't. We don't know who that is yet. Isam. Yeah, uh -huh. we do. It's um the son. The son. It is um of who. Of the of the, the the woman who left with Luke, the son of the woman. Yeah, it's in the next Her picture. Da the the daughter heir. Um, Tigraine, isn't that her name? No, no, no. A uh, bear, Berlin, Brian, and her infant son had. Oh, oh, a lands. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's lands relative. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that what this means is that Rand is related to Lan and Moiraine. Uh, William Espin, thank you for that super chat. A couple that throws together stays together. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Thank you, William. I, I think I think that what is being implied is that Rand is related to Lan and Moraine on his dad's side and to the Aiel on his mom's side. Yes, but it says one did live and one did die, but both are. So which one's alive? I think Isam died in the in the wilderness. Okay. Yeah, but I think that uh, yeah, you I think I, Luke is gonna be alive. Or Luke impregnated the Aiel woman, who is Rand's mom. And Luke is, um, Luke is Rand's dad. Oh, man. Wow. Okay. Right? <laughs> and then, because that Rand is going to be related to the Andorran, um, um, royal family. And then Elaine is going to be like all hot for him. And then she's going to find out that they're related. And she's going to be like, I've read Game of Thrones. It's fine. Let's bone down. No, no. Yeah. Mm -mm. We'll push a little boy out of a tall tower. Oh, my God. The, oh, Jesus. The, so the Watcher's made on Tommen's head. Tommen's head, we know, is where Pat and Fane and Rand are going to have a little uh, face off. <clears throat> yeah. Um, the seed of the hammer burns the ancient tree, mm -hmm. which is the, the Aiel tree, I believe. The Aiel tree. Yeah, the branch. Remember that they, they fought. Oh, they the Evan the Sedora. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. murdered a bunch of people because they cut the tree down. Um, something like that, I think. Cool, cool, cool. What's next? Yeah, and then it's just a lot of death shall sow and summer burn before the great lord comes. Death shall reap and bodies fail. Just a lot of like doom and gloom. You know, yeah. blood feeds blood, blood calls blood. Do you think the great so lord there fun. is the dark one or the great lord is Rand? The dark one, I think. Because everyone keeps calling him lord. It's fun. Fun in this section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rand, uh, Rand is a... They think he's a noble. So now... Yeah. Now we're past this. Rand gets brought before the Amalyn seat. And he's freaking out. And Lan is like, boy, here's what you got to do. You got to be formal. You got to be hot. You got to be like... Don't don't sit down. Make the lady sweat. Demand that you get to stand. And like, Lan, Rand is like... All right, Lan, I... Okay. And sure. then he goes in and he does everything Lan says. And the Amalyn seat is like... You let Lan... What, what, really, Moiraine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much time has he spent with Lan? Like, god damn it. And, and Moiraine's like, yeah, Lan's been teaching him. And the Amalyn seat's like, god damn it. Mm -hmm. Varen's sitting there like... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because split point of view, while Lan is getting Rand ready to go talk to the Amalyn seat, Varen is like, so we were in the basement and... um. Randall Thor is the Dragon Reborn, huh? And Moiraine and <laughs> so on are like, what? Uh, no, no. no. And they like pull the power out and they're like ready to like attack. Ready to murder her. <laughs> and Baron's and like, like, well, you guys are terrible liars because like I can I can see. Yeah. <laughs> it would be the same as them like pulling a knife out. Yeah. <laughs> they're like what? You do, like you. Do, like, oh my god. Okay, that's cool. Um, can yeah. I study him? Go crazy, please. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I'm not gonna tell anyone. I want to watch this all happen. I want to watch him lose his mind. I was, I was like, like, this is Baron is dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I love, I love, I love, I love that the brown Aja are kind of like written off. You know, mm -hmm. they're not paying attention. They don't know what's going on. And like Varen is on it. Mm -hmm. No. She just is she's she's so smart. Ready. She's freaking smart. Um, people keep saying cat crosses the courtyard, and I don't know what that means. Do you know what that means? The cats in the cradle and the silver spoon all mm. come together with the man on the moon. Um, and so Swan also uh, does bring up to Moraine that when she saw Rand, she knew he was the dragon because she can see Taviran. Yeah, which that is was an a interesting cool power. mention. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she was like, he blinded like the sun, which <sighs> in the show is what Loghain says when Nynaeve channels in the cave. 
Oh. Right? So what the, the... Oh, it's a sword form. Cat crosses the... the yes, yes, yes. No, oh, you're right, you're right, 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 right. There right, are a right. few of them. Sorry, yeah. I died. Yeah. Um, so when Loghain sees Nynaeve channel in the cave in episode four of the show, mm-hmm. he says the same thing about it that Sawan says to Moraine in the book here about mm-hmm. seeing Rand for the first time. Yeah. That's fun. I love that. I pick up on things. I pick up on things. I remember, I remember things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Ingletar is saying, please reread chapters four, five, seven, and eight before you continue reading. I'll read what I want to. Thank Why? you, Ingletara. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Coming in here, tell me what to do. You don't need to keep Multiple copying times. and pasting it. Jesus Christ. Um, uh, anyways, so, yes, yeah, so we have a really fun scene where Rand, <laughs> Rand is, like, all, like, trying to be when i guess i don't know and 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 swan is like all right Mm -hmm. um and he's fully like they're gonna gentle me yeah he's like they're they're gonna he's like they're i'm 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 dead he's like i'm done i'm done and and they're like yeah go do what you want well your friend matt's gonna die so do you want to go with him (laughs) yeah the whole idea that swan and maureen that they are like we need, we need Rand to do, like, we need the Dragon Reborn to, to be a certain thing, mm-hmm. and, and we need him for, like, a purpose, but, but, but if we try and force it upon Rand, he will do the exact opposite thing of what needs to happen. Those them infielders, man. Yeah. They're well, stubborn as balls. And what's so interesting about this section in particular is the manipulation that, is trying to seem not like manipulate like they they're like well we have to kind of let him do whatever mm-hmm. he needs to yeah because he needs to think that he has control over his own life and actions which it makes it seem like because he's Tavern he actually doesn't yeah i think that for like, them though it's about making him not actively choose to go against their plan yeah and i think that they also are under the impression that if they let him like kind of like run free for a minute here that mm-hmm. I I think that if there was a better political situation for them in the White Tower, they would be behaving differently because they would have a little bit more control. But mm-hmm. I think that for they need to go back to the White Tower for political reasons. Yeah, and they can't bring Rand. Like the the political situation in the White Tower is so messy for them right oh, now. Oh, Rand would be <clears throat> dead. Like so, I think that that's what a lot of it comes from, right? I yeah. think that they are. I think that they are just in a place where it is better to put him on a path that they can intersect with later. Yeah. And because Moraine and uh, Swan bring up that she has plans for him to be announced as the dragon in Ilion and that that's going to happen no matter what happens. Yeah. As long as he lives just... long enough to get there. Mm-hmm. And so I think that they're just banking on the wheel, you know, keeping him alive. And they're just having faith that the the he is better off getting to Ilion without them than not going to Ilian because he feels like they're pushing him there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He it needs to feel organic. Even though he know even though Rand is like, I will not be used, I will not be used and, and it's like, well, it seems like he kind of has no control over his life. Like it, he is a weave in the pattern well, that what's cannot funny, be changed. <laughs> what's funny is that from his position I get that, but from the books and from the audience's perspective, we know that he is. Like we know yeah. that he's doing exactly what Moraine wants. Yeah. Um, so. But it is also, in a way, kind of like the best path for him. And yeah. so it's one of those things where it's like, well, I get what they're doing. But also, I'm, I'm like, I get it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the one moment that I that just broke my heart was like, um, and we'll get more on this later. But when when Rand tells Matt, like, he's like, you're, you're like, you, you need to find this dagger. You're going to die. And Matt's like, that didn't even cross my mind that that's why you were here. Well, I don't, still don't like you because you can channel, so yeah. bye. I was like, hey, Matt's you know what, a dick. You know what one really got me was when I think it's Lan says mm-hmm. to Rand, because um, Rand is talking about his dad, and Rand, I think it might be in like the first chapter that we read, but uh, Rand, uh, Lan says, um, if a borderlander comes across a baby and raises his own, it is his baby. Yeah. And Rand is like, no, he's my dad, dad. And Lan is like, Okay, whatever. Sure, yeah, sure, whatever. whatever you and I both, it. that's not true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you can put lipstick on a pig and call it beautiful if you want, but yeah. it's still a pig. Um, so now, before everybody kind of splits out away from Faldara, um, yeah, we got, I think we got to most of the, the scenes that happened. Almost but, all of it, I but, think. But, yeah, so... Did we miss anything? We, we have not talked about the scene with Lan and Nynaeve, with the ring. Oh, Lan gives up, Lan is like, I'm not going to marry you. 
but I like it, so I'ma put a ring on it. Yeah, and a then ring that is like, big oh, enough oh, for oh, her two oh, thumbs. Oh, oh, I was like, oh, oh, whose oh, sausage oh, fingers oh, oh. did this belong on? Like I was. Like, Lance got paws. He's 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 barehanding Trollocs in the face, babe. He's got meaty man paws. But like two thumbs is literally massive. For, I feel like my thumb ring. is two of your thumbs. No, no, yeah. I, no, it's not. You got thin. You got thin thumbs. I no, I don't. Um, so yeah, I, it's a great scene. I, I love that he's like, give this to a warder and I will come no matter what. Yeah, I was he's like, like, I swear it. And I was like, oh, spicy. Um, they're, they're gonna, he is going to be her warder. I, I'm, I'm calling. I don't know what happens to Moraine, but Lan is going to be Nynaeve's warder. I've been calling it since no, like the you know second what? book chat. Or I think I've been calling it since the show. Since the show you did. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying right now that Lan and Nynaeve, like, Nynaeve is going to go green battle Aja. Because the Greens are the only ones that marry. We're getting a Lan Nynaeve wedding at some point. I actually don't think... I actually don't think that they're, that he's going to be her warder. Because it keeps things complicated between Nynaeve and Moraine and Lan. But I don't think things are going to be complicated for her. I'm saying like book like eight, babe. I'm saying we're going to have books and books and books of this. Sure. Five, year, five years down the line, book time. Lan Nynaeve are going to be married, he's going to be her warder, and they're going to be, and like, maybe there's like some other warders in that mix because she's green. I don't know how that's going to work. Well, here's the thing. She like, doesn't have to be, like, it, greens are the one who marry most often. Mm -hmm. It's rare anyways. But I, you know what? I do think Nynaeve could be green. She's got that, like, feist to her. And the yeah. greens are partially siding with the red. I don't think she'd ever become red, but that makes things a little complicated. Um, uh, Dragon's Bane said, uh, you also speculated that Egwene would make Lan her warder. I did at one point. You know, I've had mm -hmm. some different ideas, but I'm sticking to Nynaeve and Lan are going to get married. Even Lan if, and I, yeah, they all get married. I think yeah. they'll get married. But you don't think they're going to be warder and Aes Sedai? Yeah, oh, no, no, no. I think it's, I, I think it's the whole thing. You think shaban. they're going to get married and it's going to be Yeah, warder. I think, and I think that, like, I think that the first time we get to see a warder bonding in the books, the way it's going to be described is going to happen at their wedding. So they're going to, like, be bonded as husband and wife and as I said, I and warder in, like, a ceremony. And that's when we're going to get to see the warder. Hmm. What if Rand makes Lan his warder? I don't think, I don't Hot. think Rand is going to have a male warders. I think that we're, I think that Rand is going to have female no, warders. No, I don't think Rand is going to have any warders. It says he stands alone in that, like, prophecy. Ooh, in the prophecy, you're right. Alone. Yeah, yeah, he's not going to have warders. Um, I think he does, they die. Ooh. I think Rand is going to lose his warder. You think Rand is going to become an Aes Sedai, though? Um, like, yeah. Not not in the sense of, like, the women, but in the sense of the... Uh, yeah, I think that he's going to be, like, a male Aes Sedai. Okay. I have a... You know what You know what I think is... You know what I keep thinking is going to happen? What? I, this is coming out of nowhere. This this is just what I want. I think that Luce Theron Telamon is going to train Rand. Ow. I I don't know. I have a feeling that Luce is going to, like, show up to Rand like a force ghost. And he's going to, like, <laughs> I, I think, because they keep talking about how Rand can't learn from anyone because no one knows the one power. Yes. Maybe, maybe that it's not side Luce. of the one power. Maybe, maybe it's, like, some other male Aes Sedai from that time period comes to him as, like, a vision or a, like, spirit connection or something. I just think that there's going to be some, there, there's the going to be world? some... Maybe Luce is in the dream world. Well, here's the well, thing. No, but Do you th think you that can't the have that because it's his soul. It's mm -hmm. like his soul can't come back. Maybe he learns in the memories of Luce there in Telamon. Oh, maybe. Like maybe he has like memory he returns. Mountain. Maybe he goes to the mountain and he's able to somehow like yeah. connect with previous It's going to be like Luke on Octo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. I definitely think, yeah. I think, I think he's going to go to the mountain. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That's definitely going to be, that's going to be a, a thing for sure. Yeah. So, everyone is saying ship captain. Before we leave Faldara, we get one other point of view chapter. Mm -hmm. We get our boy, the ship captain's back, ladies and gentlemen. Bale Doman. He's back. Yeah. He's in Ilian. Things are popping off. There's so, raves. Mm -hmm. There's DJs. There's parties. There's God, lights. Never going north ever again. There are party drugs flowing. There's like, you know, if you want Molly, there is Molly. There's Molly. Yeah, she's the she's the barmaid. At yeah, the, Molly's Indiana, the, yeah. the barmaid. Um, so, Just um, ask for Molly. Bale Doman's life is a mess. Uh, 
he is meeting there are people who continuously want him to sail west yeah he doesn't want to and every time he says no someone who works for him is murdered i know it's really weird and you're like but here's the thing jesus christ but here's the thing he then accepts the gold and then someone is still murdered so it's, yeah because they the dark ones are trying to find out information about rand and matt and perrin yeah oh for sure i'm assuming that but his like, boat like smells like them because rand channeled on his boat yeah yeah, yeah mm-hmm mm-hmm so we get the actual ship captain, and he's, like, just, like, ready to go, and he's like, look, tell the boys, we leaving, and if they don't make it to the boat in, like, 30 minutes, I guess they just live in Ilian now. Yeah, literally. They, there was, like, four of them that didn't make it. Three. He's like, leave them behind. Three of them don't make yeah, it, and he's yeah, yeah. like, ah, whatever. Kevin, thank you Kevin, for thank you for that. Chat. I love listening to you make predictions, mostly when you're so close to what happens, but so far off at the same time. That uh, is our, that's our... Yeah. That's the fun of it. You guys know stuff that we're just, like... Um, can you imagine... Being the guy that, like... The boat smells like Rand's teeth. <laughs> uh, can I imagine what... What does Rand's taint smell like? Um, Lilac and the, 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 part, the part of the book where Rand is describing the fact that his underclothes would get so hard that they wouldn't move anymore and he would just keep wearing them. I was like, this is Ew, so gross. gross. I have never once, never once in my life... Worn underwear, worn underwear More than, like, two days in a row. Maybe two days. I've never mm. even done that. Well, some sometimes I, like, sleep in them, and then, like, I'll, like, shower at, like, five the next day. So, like, I'll wear so them wait, until you, the shower. Yeah. I kind of wear underwear mm-hmm. shower to shower. Shower to shower. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you shower, like, every, like, 24 to 36 hours, <laughs> give or take. Or sometimes, I, no, I shower every, like, eight to 36 hours. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes it's, like, morning, workout, and night. Sometimes there's three showers in a day. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a uh-huh. clean boy. Uh-huh. But so, if uh-huh. I don't do anything, sometimes it's, like, 36 hours. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, sometimes mm-hmm. it's, like, well, you know, my wife's is away on a shoot, and, like, I'm just home alone, lying I'm in bed. There's no reason here. for me to get up and shower and then come back to bed. Hot. You know. Super just... hot. Uh-huh. So, Bail Doman, it's so good to see him. Y'all were, like, ship captain comes back, and I was, like, I hope so. I like the ship captain well, a lot. I was, like, Oh, no, he's here. He's he's here. He's a he's a POV character. Yeah. We get like POV Bail Doman and he's kind of hilarious. Like yeah. he's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's <laughs> his, great. his friend his like his coworker dies and he's like, "But I gave, I took the money." Yeah, he's like, "Huh, weird." Huh. Eh, all right. I did the thing. Yeah. Why would they kill me? <laughs> he's like, "Let's freaking go." They get the hell out of there. They get the hell out of Dodge and they have to go get someone from the place that Rand is going. Yeah, well, and they're obviously going to run back into each other, and I think we'll get. Well, and then he has to come back to Ilian, and so he, yeah, Rand is going to fight Pad and Fane mm-hmm. in Tommen's head, yeah, and then get on the boat with Ship Captain yeah. and come back around to Ilian yeah. to be announced as a Dragon Reborn. Yeah. I'm calling it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Matheny. Thank you so much for that super chat. You two do be funny as well. <laughs> I'm the funny one. She's the hot uh, one. Uh, get it straight. I mean, get it straight. Uh, <laughs> no, you're funny. You're very funny. And uh, you're very attractive. So here's what's going to happen. Thank you. <laughs> um, so Rand is going, they're going to chase Penfane to Tommen's head. They're yeah. going to have a fight. Uh-huh. They're going to get the dagger back, but they're not going to get the horn back. So they're going to go to Ilian without the horn, but with the dagger. They're going to cure Matt. Uh-huh. And then they're going to have to great hunt again. Great hunt again. Yes. 2. No, they're going to they're gonna grab everyone who's at the great hunt For in the, Ilian. Yeah. And they're going to go like 2.0 hunt. Yeah. And um, then he's going to bring out his dragon banner in Ilian and... Oh, the banner, that's yeah, right. He has a big old banner, and he's like... Mm-hmm. Oh my god, why the hell would Moraine give me this? So, um, Bail Domain, that's that's kind of all that happens with Bail. Yeah. You know, he's concerned. Oh, no, he has a letter with him that says that he works for the Dark One, which is super strange. That, yeah, that the whole letter parchment was, bit was confusing, because I didn't know how he... It was he, confusing. I didn't really know how he got it. Me neither. And I went back and tried to find it. I couldn't really figure it out. Yeah, I was I was a little bit confused about the letter. Um, But we actually also got a POV white cloak section. That's next. That, that hasn't happened yet. Oh, I thought it was earlier. No, that's while they're on the hunt. Oh, yeah. I, basically, white cloaks are really crappy. No, but it's the guy from... It's Boars. Yeah, yeah. Boars is one of the heads of the white cloaks. Uh-huh. But he's one of the questioners. Boars is? No. Yeah, because he has the golden sun with the red sparrow. So the golden sun is the white cloaks, and the golden sun with the red sparrow is the questioners. No, I thought the questioner was the, like, hook. Oh, no, but it says that when they meet the questioners at the bridge place, that it has the red sparrow on his shirt. Am I right? He was given to deliver the letter. Oh, oh the letter isn't about him. Okay, I was like, I'm a little bit confused. Okay, yeah, the red crook, the shepherd's crook. It's I don't think it's a sparrow. The red crook. 
Yeah, it's the, yeah. I read that as Red Rook. And I thought they were talking about a bird. Oh, okay. Uh -huh, I, uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, it was a crook. Yeah. I I I read I read Rook, uh -huh. and so I just thought it was about a bird. Yeah, no, the no, letter is about it. him. It's a trap. Oh, I did not get that at all. They gave him the letter to deliver, uh -huh. and then they were going to kill him when he delivers the letter. That's I, I, that that crossed my mind, but then it didn't like what's for, with with the goal, like. There has to be someone that he... Bob is, Hoskins he, has always been my head cannon dome and, oh my god, if they got Bob Hoskins to be ship captain, I... <laughs> that's such good casting. Oh my god, Dick. That is such good casting. Uh, I see. Okay, okay. Yeah, I definitely... Both and I... Uh, both both of us were, like, a little bit confused with the letter part, but that, that makes more sense. A seal to the Dark One's prison is on Bale Doman. What? Oh, that's what the thing he has is, is the old thing. It's a seal to the Dark One's prison. Yeah. The thing that he pulls out of the wall. Yeah, the... the, the I didn't yeah. read... Oh, my God. I did not put any of this together. He said... It, he, I thought he had a flashlight. He did. He had several things. He had the skull with the Aes Sedai... Like, Y'all, I read this at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I missed so many things. It was a busy week, but yeah, no, there, there was, there was the, the, the disc that was the unbreakable, the uh, Quindalar. yeah, um, and then there was a light, there uh, that's was not a, light a spoiler, stick. that's, that, he has that, yeah, the yeah light that's, stick. In, that's in this chapter, I yeah. don't think that's spoiling, um, and oh then... my god, yeah, it's the same thing as that, the freaking eye of the world, oh my god, so Bale Doman literally is the most important character right now, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, 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 he's like, um, yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's got all these things that are going to be really important. I don't know if the skull is going to be important, but who knows? We'll see. So, okay, so new plan. In Tommen's head, Rand is going to break the thing. The seal? The seal. By mm -hmm. accident. Mm -hmm. Thinking that that's what he's supposed to do, because that's what he did at the Eye of the World. Not realizing that by doing that, he's, he's advancing. No, here's the thing. I think that for Rand to be able to defeat the Dark One, the seals have to be broken. But I don't think that the people of this world are going to see it that way. Oh, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. No, but I think that that is going to be part of the, like, you know, it's the, like, um, uh, it's that, the, the, the trope of, like, y you... You can't fight him until you can touch him. Well, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like, right now he's still there, but he's, like, at least captured. Like, you, ha he has to be able to be free um, to be able to, like, fully, like, defeat him. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, wow, that's so much more interesting. Thank you for clarifying about the letter. I was confused about the letter, yeah, and that was helpful. Yeah, yeah. This is why, this is why you got to read with friends, y'all. Read with... That's why you got to have a book club. You got to have a book club. Um, Next yes. up, Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, do you remember when every book club was just Fifty Shades of Grey? No. Nope. And all of our moms were just like... Nope. Getting horny together? Mm, nope. I wish I could forget it. Mm. Uh, so back in Faldara, everybody's leaving... Rand gets outside and he's like heading over to his team of horses and people and he doesn't see Egwene and he pieces out without seeing her. And how do you feel about him not saying goodbye to Egwene? It's weird. I don't think it's weird. It's, this, it's what I would do. Wait, Rand does say goodbye to Egwene. That's oh. why he goes to the chambers with his sword. And no, 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 no. On the day of, he's like, I, he, he like doesn't say a final goodbye to Egwene. He doesn't see her at the... Because the, yes, she's he, not out yet. He does. He they, She cries. They're like, I don't know if we'll ever see each other again. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. But then he's like... it's uh, they, 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 The boys leave. And he heads to leave, the but, courtyard. But then he, the, he's like waiting for her to come out. And then she doesn't come out. And he leaves. And he's like, maybe it's easier this way. To not have her there when he's leaving. I, I don't know. They definitely Rand, Rand says goodbye. like it's easier this way for her not to be here when I'm like... Sure, but they have a goodbye. Like I they, think Nerdy may need to reread this section. Yeah, yeah, no, they they have they have the whole scene. It's like he doesn't see her off. Sorry, Robert. Yes, that's that's a better way to put it. Yeah. But Rand Rand is I wanted to bring up Rand says like it's easier to leave without her there is what I was trying to bring up about right. the section. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, I understand not, what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. He does go say goodbye to her. Yeah. And that he's going off with Matt Perrin. But like in the moment in the courtyard, she's not there. And he's mm -hmm. like, it's easier. Yeah. And I, Lan comes over and tells him to stab himself at some point. Um, yeah, hey, sheath the sword. Um, and then he's just gone. Yeah. He, like, looks weird. away. And... But I, I also love the moment where um, the woman is, like, 
Look, like, Rand would make a really good husband. If he's yours, like, that's cool. But, like, if not, you know, there's lots yeah, if, of if people If you lay waiting. claim to him, like, we'll, we'll leave him alone. We get it. But, like, yeah. if, you're, if you're not going to tie that if, down. If he can be tamed, you know, if he can be trained, house trained, he's, uh, he's going to be all right. Like, it's like, oh, my God. This is amazing. Um, and, yeah, they leave. And uh, we don't – what what I think is interesting is for this next section, that that's it. Like, we don't know what happens to anyone else. Yeah. We kind of just go on the path with – we get the POV of the White Cloaks, but up until the end of Chapter 11, all we know <laughs> is um, what, go, what happens with Rand, Matt, and Perrin. Yeah, so no, I'm, that's true. So I'm excited true. for the next section of the book because we're going to get to, I hope we get to see what happens to everyone else in this, like, weeks yeah. that we're with Rand, Matt, and Perrin. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming they just kind of get to Tarvalon without too much problems. They have, like, 20 Aes Sedai with them. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming yeah. the Amelin seat, not usually in danger on the roads. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Jay Martin, you don't need to yell at us. We know. We but know. Before, we before they leave... <laughs> The yeah. Amelin seat is talking to Rand, and uh-huh. out of nowhere, an arrow just whoosh, whizzes yeah. by and kills somebody. Yeah, you, you whoever attempted that's got real bad aim. Jeffrey Rush is Bale Doman. Ooh, Stephen Wilkerson, thank you for thank that spoiler chat. Super Jeffrey chat. Rush, good casting. Super chat. Did I say spoiler chat. You did. God, you're back on Damn it. Damn it, no. Uh, we'll, um, we'll train it out of you. We get that whoosh, arrow. Yeah, that like grazes Swan and like murders. Somebody. Some random soldier. Question. Uh-huh. So Nidao and Chengdu uh-huh. are gone, right? Because they're with the Trollocs that are running. Do you think that the person who shot the arrow is the Shinarin um, from the from the prologue? prologue? Potentially. Right. It, it, the, here's the thing: it could be that person, or it could be the Shinarin, like one of the other two guys. Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I kill somebody. It like scratches Swan. She's like, it's just a flesh wound. Like she's like, I'm fine. She's like. <laughs> What is it? No, she does her thing. She's like, I've had worse cuts gutting fish or something like that. And you're yeah, like, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. God. Yes, we get it. It like nicks her, and but but it kills the person behind her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. then she's like, oh, people have tried to kill me before. And Rand is like, yeah, but that wasn't, they that weren't was trying to kill you. Me. They were trying yeah. to kill me. And she knows. She makes that, she, you know, she knows. <gasps> Clancy Brown is Bale Doman. Y'all, Chad is just crushing it. Chad, Chad is casting, and uh, Chad is I'm casting. here I love it. for it. Um... Yeah. From Fish, Fish Queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, yeah, it was one of those swan moments. We're like, <sighs> swan. Like, <laughs> she's just like, uh, she's chill. Yeah. I also love that it happens and she's like, she doesn't move. She's like, oh, whatever. Yeah, she literally, like, does not give a fuck. She's like, ah, uh, I still look good. Um, yeah, and then they, they leave. They, they leave. She gives a and cool speech. Then we get the white cloak thing. Okay. Then I we get the was... interlude of the, the white cloaks in Tab, not Tabernac. That's French. Um, in um, Tarabon, Tarabon, um, and the, we get the old, we get like the gr- um, <laughs> Captain Kennedy from the Force Awakens or from uh, the Last Jedi, the the uh, military leader of the Dreadnought in the opening scene of the Last Jedi when they're like, we need to scramble uh, scramble the fighters, Captain Kennedy, and he's like, yeah, scramble the fighters. They should have been scrambled five bloody minutes ago. And I was like, oh, it's Captain Kennedy. Yeah. He's like, why am I at this bridge? Why are we doing this? Why are we, what, what, why is any of this happening? And they're like, don't you worry about it. And he's like, I, I would really like to understand why we're going to war here. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. And, and like fair, you know, like this, I think this section, it's not even a full chapter. It's just a little like piece. Mm-hmm. And it's really like, God, like the white hooks are awful. Yeah. Well, and what's interesting about it is it sets up something that feels so far away from any of our main characters. Uh-huh. Like we don't know anyone in Terabon. Or Almuth Fields, but yeah. that by the end of the book, those two places are going to be so important mm-hmm. because they've been mentioned in the prologue, and now this. 100%. There is something going on here yeah. that is just really important. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, that I did not like that. So it's like I. Yeah, the, the questioners. Cloak. I like that even among the white cloaks, the questioners are like too intense. Well, and but here's the thing: this guy, like he, the the uh, what's his name is they're basically like yeah uh, no witnesses murder entire villages no big yeah. deal because we do it in the name of the light and I'm like well and what I love about having this section here is that it pits the the murder of the villages of the white cloaks against the murder of the villages by the of trollocs the dark friends? and yeah. it is showing that the white cloaks are more similar to the trollocs than they are to the the, the good guys yeah yeah and so it is an interesting um. You know, it is this interesting comparison between the two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of you have these white cloaks who are moving across the fields and and through the countryside, uh, and the leader of those 
the White Cloaks, mm -hmm. um, who's doing this because he has to and because he's been commanded to, does not want to hurt people. He's avoiding everything to try and hurt as few people as possible where um, the Trollocs aren't. But then when he goes to find the Questioners, who are like the most egregious of the White Cloaks, they're doing the exact same things that the Trollocs are doing. Yeah. And so putting these two kind of sections side by side to me, I think was just really fantastic on Robert Jordan's part. Yeah, um... <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, uh, yeah, I loved that, like, like you said, that they're they're playing off of each other mm -hmm. in a way that um, just really kind of sheds a light on the White Cloaks. Um, and then, yeah, and then we have this kind of montage. We, we meet a guy, I was trying to find his name. Kieran? Here, yeah, who can smell violence. Very, thank you, Chet. Very interesting um, ability. Do you think, okay, <laughs> so with Huron, yeah. do you think that he, if he, like, walks into, like, a couple's bedroom, he can, like, Tell smell a spanking? Spanking? If probably... Does he, can, like, if a woman walks by him and, like, her, she's, like, into BDSM, do you think he's, like, oh, kinky? <laughs> you know that what? One, that one, that, you know. Probably. As long as it happened, like, fairly recently, yeah, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it, with it... <laughs> Chains and whips excite so, you, you know. So, that, that's so weird, right? Because everyone he meets, he knows, like, if they were into BDSM in the last couple of hours. Yeah, in the last couple of hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what wild. a What a power. You know, what a... Yeah, that's a... Anyways. <laughs> uh, so, we meet him, wild. and he's able <clears throat> to smell violence, which... Oh, it has to be ill intent? Mike McCarthy is saying it has to be ill intent. So then, no, he wouldn't be. Because I. I no, then you he know. wouldn't be able to. No. Because no, no, the if intent it's is always good. Yeah, if it's consensual, then I well, guess. Well, if it's he, consensual, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then I guess he doesn't smell it. But I don't know if that's ever. <clears throat> I don't know if I caught on to that. I thought it was just like violent acts, but yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so we travel across. So the dark friends are like zigzagging. <laughs> Wait, Danny's all like, over it the feels place. like a CBS procedural drama. What if he can smell crime? It's, Law and Order colon Huron. No, it's, and it's just <laughs> it's Rain Wilson from the office. <laughs> no, no, it's the mentalist. But the instead mentalist. of but instead of him like <laughs> figuring it out in his brain, he, he just crime. smells it. Oh my god. Um, Wait, we'll get we'll get Hugh Laurie back. I feel like Hugh Laurie could play this part. Um as like house, but he smells crime. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's I so love Hugh funny. Laurie. Smell violence unit. Oh my god. <laughs> SVU, the smell violence unit. That's so funny. That oh, is God. awful, um, but so funny. So they, uh, so they, oh my God. So, yeah, the, the dark friends are like zigzagging all over the place. They're like this way, this way, this way. No, um, they're pretty much going south. They're not zigzagging. They're like going like south and then a little bit west than south and a little bit west than south. No, and then it's northeast and then it's no, like they're, they're all. A little, over. but they, they're mostly going south. Sure, they're trying to yeah. throw off the trail though. Uh, um, for sure. The way the show in season one makes me think Elias might replace Huron. <gasps> Duro, thank you for that super, super chat. chat. <laughs> thank you. You saw my lips go mm -hmm. towards a P. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that did not sound. I'm so sad that quotes don't exist on uh, that YouTube. That did not sound right. Um, um, oh, they could mix Huron and, and Elias into one person. Yeah. That makes so much sense, Duro. Yeah, I could, I could definitely. For season two, yeah, because they, yeah, they do happen. have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. we get more into Perrin and the Wolf Brotherness because he learns as through the hunt. Yes, no, I, I think that okay. that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I like that. I like that as a if you have to if you have to like scrunch things down. Yeah. Um, I like that you used a good word, and I used scrunch. Scrunch things with this hand motion that looks all, like I'm flexing my butthole. Um. <laughs> The, the people who listen to this as a podcast, first of all, to anyone who downloads this as a podcast, thank you so much. This is I'm available so as a sorry. podcast on so many podcast <laughs> platforms. But um, uh, I'm so sorry that you don't get all the visual humor of uh, me not knowing what to do with my hands. Oh, it's great. Um, so they're they're chasing Pat and Fane, the Fades, the Trollocs, all these people. They're like riding a convoy. Crossy ways, hey, convoy. convoy. Um, and they keep coming up to these villages. And village one, there's nobody in it except a woman in a window. Yeah. Who at first I thought, I was like, is that Lanfear? And then I was like, no, no, no. That's going to be like a big everything. Oh, I thought it was Evan Hansen. Learn to slam on the brakes. Um, <laughs> and so they're like, is that a woman? Nah, she's not there. That's weird. Okay, so they keep going. And they're That's like, and then they get to the next village, and there is a fade. 
Who has no, been... no, no. You missed the, the two dark friends were skinned alive. Oh, yeah. Chengdu and um, Nidao. Nida, Nida. Were skinned alive. With just their heads have skin on them. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, Pat and Fane is Ramsey Bolton. Yeah. Is is Ramsey Bolton. Uh, ugh. Yeah, so yeah, that's it's no dark. fun. It's dark. Flaying is one of those things that I'm like... Bleh. I do appreciate... Yeah. You know, one of the things I appreciate <laughs> about Rand's character development thus far is he really does not, like this run gore and so like he's gonna get used to violence i think throughout the series and we'll see him be more comfortable but he vomits <laughs> twice yeah, yeah. in this, this section well and then, he throws up in the basement in the dungeon when he sees those dead bodies mm -hmm. and then he throws up here as well yeah there's also the moment where he gets caught in a weird time loop what the time loop the time loop yeah he walks into the um oh no that's a dream is it yeah it's in the dream world right the time loop you are correct yeah, there's. I'm trying to remember which village that was in. I think it was like the second one. But yeah, he walks I, into a thing. I, so I'm dyslexic, as we've talked about on this before. Yeah. The time loop to me was so weak. I would have. I would have finished this book 40 minutes earlier without that because I legitimately thought I got lost <laughs> in the book. Yeah. Because I was reading, I was like, didn't I just read this? And then I would go back and read it earlier. Y'all, the time loop for me was truly so. God, I, why can't so I find difficult it? to yeah. read. Anyways, yeah, there's a weird time loop thing. I don't, I don't know if that was a dream because he didn't. I, I guess know. I'm just I'm so used to weird things happening in dreams in, dreams. in these books that yeah. that's my first thought. Yeah. I Do know. you think that Rand has visions? Because we know that the Aes Sedai have visions. Yeah, the one who uh, helps Morgase. Yeah. Uh, it's not Elida, but it's no, it is Elida. Is it Elida? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. The one who helps Morgase has like visions as well. I don't know if it's. I don't know it's, if he has oh. visions. Clot complex, thank you. Rise and shine, woodchuck chuckers. That movie is so good. That um, movie is so good. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's. It, it's either a vision. I, I don't think it's. I don't think he literally walks into a time loop. So it's either a vision or a dream. I don't know if it matters which it is. I don't know if there's a difference between visions and dreams in this world. You know what? That's also fair. You know we what I mean? Like, know. if dream walking is a thing, like, I, I just, mm. I, I don't know that it matters which it is. But, yeah, he, he goes through some sort of, but honestly, I didn't get a lot out of the time sequence. And maybe I was just so confused by it that I wasn't able to understand a lot. But it just, it didn't seem relevant well, yet. there's a really interesting thing that is relevant in it. Mm -hmm. Where we know that, like, Rand has this, like, void thing. That he can He goes to the of, candle. Yeah, and we know that Pad and Fane can't sense him when he does his little void trick. And so I think that that's channeling. But he doesn't know it yet. Why would Pad and Fane not be able to sense him when he's only when he's channeling, though? I don't know, but he has... Uh, the, the only I connection think, I that I can the, make I, between Pad and Fane... Because Pat and Fane is like, he winks out of like Someone posted sometimes. some spoilers in our chat because mm -hmm. Joe Chio is trying to help out. And Tyler, thank, thank you to everyone posting S for spoilers. Yeah, thank you for trying to save us from spoilers. Um, yeah, so, so, so we know that Rand sometimes is able to, like, hide himself from Fane unintentionally, and I mm -hmm. think it's when he goes to this void place, and it, and that's how he kind of gets out of this time loop thing as well, and I think, mm -hmm. I think that that is channeling, that he okay. doesn't know it yet, because we know Sight and Sight R are different, and they work differently. All right, we have enough S's in the chat, we have enough S's <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> Thank you. Um, interesting. No, yeah, I understand that. I... S is short for ship captain. Fudgy Vamp says, uh, Maureen said channeling gives some protection to people from the dark. Yeah. But wouldn't, but I thought that was the women's side. Wouldn't the, wouldn't the man's side, because of the taint, allowed the darkness in? We don't know. Maybe, but like, we, we don't know. And I, I feel like we're both, um, people are saying we need to reread that section. I think we're going to have to reread that section very carefully before we move on. All right. Yeah. Okay. I, we'll, yeah, we'll, I... we'll dive into it more and we'll, we'll, we'll come back with better theories next week. Because honestly, I found it very... That, that part was very confusing for me. It, it was very confusing. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, um, so, yes, the next village, there is a fade Jesus Christed on a door. And like... Which is... Uh, you, the way that... Um, woof. The, the way that Pat and Fane talks about the fades mm -hmm. and hating them... Yeah. I'm, I was like, oh, yeah, wow, we got to see it there. Because I'm sure Pat and Fane was just like, nah, fuck this, and just murdered him and was mm -hmm. like, now now I'm in charge. Like, Do you think that Pat and Fane has that ability naturally? or No, it's the... You think it's the dagger, distilling. right? Distilling. No, but oh. I think it's the dagger. 
Because here's the thing. Yeah. The fades, okay. the fades are the dark one's people, right? Uh-huh. So I don't think that the dark one would give Pat and Fane the ability to kill his lieutenants. I think that he's killing the lieutenants with Shadar Lagoth's power. With um what uh what is not mentioned Shin, that's the dark Mordoth. one. Mordoth. Mordeth? No, Mordeth was the Mor- No, what was the name of the power in Shadar Lagoth? Mordeth was the guy they ran into. Mordeth was the guy and also Oh my god, what was that? Power, right? No, no, no the power's name is Mashadar. Mashadar thank you. I think that the I think that Pat and Fane has the dual taints of the Dark One and the Mashadar in him now because of the dagger. Yeah. And I think that Mashadar is what gives him the power to fight the fades. Yeah, and I think that I think that Pat and Fane is going to become his own villain. Like I think he's going to he's going to stop serving the Dark One and I think he already has. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the I think because they because they talk about how um this you know how they keep switching directions between northeast and south. Yeah. I think that what's happening is the fades wanted to go into the blight to take the horn to Shire Ghoul. Shire Ghoul. Ghoul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that Pad and Fane is the one taking them south. And I think that Pad and Fane is supposed to take the horn to Shire Ghoul, and he's not. Interesting. And so okay, I yeah. think that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that there's he going to. The fade. He like, kills the fade, who keeps leading them in the other direction. Yeah. And I think that Pat and Fane, Pat and Fane says more death knows, who we know from Shadar Lagoth. Yes, yes. And so I just, I really do think that Pat and Fane is no longer a lackey for the Dark One. And uh, the dueling of the taints sounds right. Only if it's written by uh, John Williams. We need yeah, a yeah, duel, yeah. duel of the taints uh, theme song. Theme song, Written yeah. by John Williams. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think he also did meet with Machin Chin. But Machin Chin is the Dark One, is on the Dark One's team, right? Well, no, we don't. We don't know that. All we know is that the way, like, it came about in the ways because the ways were tainted by the power. Did, but it could. But be... But that's the dark one's taint. Sure. So match and chain. Match and chain literally comes from the dark one's taint. Well, they or it comes say about they because of the dark one's taint. But they say they like they don't know whether he was just like where whether the wind was just like there and part of the ways, or if it came about because of the like falling apart. Like we don't we don't really know. Interesting. What we yeah. do know is that Pat and Fane has two taints on him. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's got that double taint. He's got that double taint. And I so I don't I don't think I don't think the Dark One would have given him the power to kill Faith. But I do mm-hmm. think that um Mashadar would. Yeah. And I think that that's really fascinating. Like I yeah. like the idea that there's going to be the dual sides of the dark power. And I think that Pat and Fane will lean more towards Shadar Lagoth. Yeah. Because I think that Pat and Fane is a man driven by greed. If we go back to the first Pat and Fane that we meet, he's this peddler who, um, when his cart is destroyed, he's so upset about the destruction of his physical property. Yeah. Like, he seems very driven by um, money and by, like, finery and that kind of motivation, that, yeah. ki- that kind of greed, mm-hmm. as opposed to, like, being a nobleman greed. Like, I don't think he wants power so much as he wants, like, wealth. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And so I think that Mashadar is going to definitely give him more of that mm-hmm. than um, I think the Dark One does. And so I think he's going to lean into the power of Mashadar. I think he's going to take some Trollocs onto that side. There's going to be dueling dark sides. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I think so, too. Pat and Fane, you know who Pat and Fane is? He is the Darth Maul of this universe. Or the Saruman. No, because Saruman ultimately bows before the Dark One. Whereas Darth Maul actively no, goes against not Palpatine. In the books. Not in the books. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Not in the books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different in the, the movie for... I, I think... Yeah. I'm talking more how, like... Because Darth Maul is literally Palpatine's apprentice. Yeah. And then after he's... And comes back, he actively is fighting against Palpatine for the almost the rest of his life, right? And I think that Pat and Fane is going to have a similar relationship with the Dark One to what we see in Darth Maul through the Clone Wars. Interesting. Okay. I have not seen the Clone Wars, so That's I good. will trust you on that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, yeah, it's like Pat and Fane's Robert chapter. Power says to compare him to Agent Smith from The Matrix. That's fun. <laughs> Can we get Pat and Fane some dope glasses and a leather jacket? Uh, yeah, uh, let's let's. How weird it. would it? How weird would it be if in season two, Pat and Fane shows up in like a modern times black suit and glasses, <laughs> and no one else is in normal clothes except him? Well, uh, here's the thing: is I, I was like, I was like, wait, wait, would... the Forsaken have just been sealed away for thousands of years? Mm-hmm. Can they just show up in totally normal clothes? Like, can they show up in like, like a this? Metallica T-shirt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're from our time. <laughs> they're just totally, there's just one Forsaken who's just like fully in like a TikTok hoodie. And he was like a TikTok partner in his time because TikTok is uh, the work of Shaitan. Mm-hmm. Um, 
It would be so funny. <laughs> There's just one. He like crawls out of his thing and he's just like fully when decked out in 2020 up. gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all, all the Forsakens are from like different time periods. So we got like the 80s. What if Lanfear is just like full <laughs> neon? Full neon. Well, Lanfear knows she's in like a jazzercise outfit. With like the knee highs. And the headband. The thigh highs and the headband. <laughs> Just like bright, and everything's a different bright color. The knee highs are yellow. The body suits like bright pink, and then she's like a neon green. Like it's like the worst. Like, wait, someone shows up in a Canadian tuxedo. Oh my god, <laughs> Alex says he's like Johnny and Cobra Kai. Exactly, <laughs> that would be so funny. Uh, I love that. Oh my god, what's wasn't there a meme that was like me and the boys? That's what I think. Mean yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man. I would oh my god, bell bottoms. The the Forsaken need bell bottoms. Yes, no. light blinded fool. No, no. We've kind of gotten to the end of the reading though. Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind that's of it. it. We we're gonna do we did our smut corner, so we've just got high lows. What's the high of the chapter for you? Of the section for you? Uh, for those of you who don't know, high low is the uh, how we uh, talk um, at the end of our uh, book club because uh, my family used to sit around the table and we would talk about the highs of our day and the lows of our day because we like to commiserate about the things that go wrong in our lives and celebrate the things that go right. So what's mm. your favorite part of this section of the book? My favorite part was when Egwene sits on Rand. <laughs> I, uh, mm-hmm. That's it. Um, no my- more explanation. <laughs> Fair. I just that was that was my favorite part. Egwene's got that top energy. Um, uh, my favorite part. Uh, my favorite part is just no, the, no. You do your low. Oh, my low. My low is that the dice guys won't let Loyal play dice with them. Yeah. Like rude. Rude. I get that you don't want to take his money, but like I also like that he's like I want to play, but the dice are very small. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so they're so small. <laughs> oh. Do you think great. Loyal's eyebrows will be longer in season two? No. I think a great gag for the show to do would be for Loyal's eyebrows to get longer every season. Mm-hmm. Until they're just, like, down to his waist. He's got oh, these... my God. Um, all right, what's your low? Uh, my low is... Is Rand's, like, relationship with his friends now. Like, he, you know, he tried to he tried to break away from them, and mm-hmm. it didn't work. And he's there to help Matt. And Matt's like, oh, yeah, but you can channel, so uh, you can't sit with us. And I was like, Matt. He goes full on book five Harry Potter. Yeah. yeah. I was like, Matt, you're a dick. And at least Perrin is kind of like, well, I don't know. But, um, like, ugh, so mad about that. I want to get into that in one second, but I'm going to do my okay. high first. My high of this is Lan and Rand's relationship. That's mm. my favorite part of this section of the book. I thought the 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 way Lan treats Rand in this is awesome. We talked about it a lot throughout this episode, but like mm-hmm. all of the advice he gives, the training, I, I just I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Having said that, mm-hmm. we do we are show watchers first, and that is ostensibly what this podcast is about. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you a big question. Mm-hmm. How do how does the show move forward with some of these storylines now that Rand being the Dragon Reborn isn't the big deal to all of the main characters that it is in the books because there's a really big emotional shift in the relationships in the books when everyone finds out that he's the dragon and people's opinions on that really matter whereas in the show everyone knows that one of them is going to be the dragon from the beginning and so the reveal of him being the dragon doesn't really matter to anyone other than the fact that it is him but everyone is just like they can't be that upset with him because they're all it, they, they, they just fundamentally changed all of our main characters' relationships with the concept of the Dragon Reborn in the show. Well, yeah, and I have no idea how Rand goes on the hunt for the horn. Right, yeah, Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how they get there. I legitimately, I'm... I don't know how he gets out of the blight. <laughs> yeah, I am very confused. We also, um, we didn't touch on that Rand is named second in command. Oh, yeah, 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 the... <laughs> Which, I, I don't really have much to say about it, other than, like... Yeah, Melancy tells ugh. them that, basically, that he's the Dragon Reborn. <laughs> but basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's kind of, like, that, yeah. I, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't know what like, the show does. the show, the show is fun, because, honestly, like, the, the physical actions that they're all taking, the show mm-hmm. can recreate. That's fine, right? Sure. Obviously, they're going to go hunt the horn. Mm-hmm. I think that, um... Uh, we talked at the end of book one about how Loyal is going to... They're going to need to cure Loyal's taint, Right? Instead of Matt's, because Loyal's been stabbed by the dagger. Yeah. I think now they have to hunt the dagger. They need the dagger to cure Loyal's taint. So I think yeah. Loyal is going to be sidelined for a bunch of season two while they go get the dagger back to cure Loyal. I you think that that's think... how they're going to handle that. Oh, you think they're going to bring it back to Faldara? I figured they'd no, all I think go they're going to take. I think they're going to take Loyal to Tarvalon. 
so that they don't have to do the uh, the expense of his CGI and his makeup. Yeah. So they're going to sideline him so that he's just like in a bed somewhere to save money. And then they're going to go get the dagger and bring it to Loyal to cure him of whatever ails him. Um, yeah. That's just my prediction for season two. But I think that the, the big question I have is you have fundamentally changed how people look at the Dragon Reborn. And so yeah, while yeah. the physical actions can be similar, the emotional connection between these characters is going to be really fundamentally different from now on because you never have to pay off that question. Right? You never have to satisfy that. No one ever has to become comfortable with him being the Dragon Reborn because you spent all of season one with them all kind of already knowing. Yeah. Or having a relationship with the concept of the Dragon Reborn. There's no shock when Rand is a Dragon Reborn because they know it's going to be one of them. Yeah, yeah. That's... Because we didn't really talk yeah. about it, but they tell Rand that he's the Dragon Reborn and he freaks out in this section. Yeah. We kind of skipped over that to get to the prophecy and the Moiraine talking about his dad, but like... But yeah, no, he... Like, it is... Ugh. I Claude Complex says Loyal will go on the hunt for the same reason Matt does in the book. I don't think he will for production reasons. I think it is. I think that that effect is probably expensive, and I think that they're going to remove him from that narrative just to save money on that. Um, it's a huge change. It is a huge change. It's it's really interesting. It it is interesting to me. It's such a huge change in terms of the basics of. All of these characters' relationships. Yeah, no, it's a great point. I don't, I don't know what to like. I don't know what to say about that because I'm kind of like, yeah. What do you? What's the? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That seems like a very that that it's going to be a weird workaround for them, and I don't know how it, how they're going to do it. Also, basically, everyone in Faldar is dead, so they're going to leave Faldar real quick at the beginning. Oh of the next yeah, story. yeah. They're not. All the men Kara. are dead, right? Like, there's no oh, more men there. Yeah. It's just a bunch of ladies and Perrin. <laughs> And Loyal's been stabbed. But no, yeah. seriously, like, Lan and Moiraine are going to get back to Faldara in episode one of season two and be like, w wh where is everybody? Oh, no, they're all dead. Even And even a lot of the women are dead, right? Like, because yeah. the Fates killed a bunch of people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Um, people are talking that's about the CGI tough. of um, Loyal. He's not CGI. That's that's practical makeup. I my, yeah. What I'm talking about is the difficulty of putting him on a horse for the scenes of them hunting. Yeah, because he can't, unless they just make him run. Tithanis, thank you so much for the super duper chat. Um, Tithanis, in the books, Rand doesn't believe he is the Dragon Reborn. He thinks, he, I said I want to manipulate him like they did the other false dragons. He's a conspiracy theorist, essentially. I don't agree with that. I, I think he says that to himself, but deep yeah. down he knows. Because yeah. Baalzaman keeps telling him he's the Dragon Reborn. Yeah, that's, I, I think he doesn't want to believe. I think he, I think his conspiracy theory is that he's not the Dragon Reborn. <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't fully believe it. Because there's just no way, there's just no way. But in the same way he keeps saying, Tam is my father. It's like, yeah, well, yeah. He but he knows, also knows. He knows. Because you brought up the section where he's like, Tam is my dad. I wish it didn't sound like I was trying to convince myself. Yeah, he like, literally that is, says that yeah. too. Yeah. And so that, yeah, that's tough. Ah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nathaniel Muller asks, who is in charge of Faldara? The Lord and his sister are dead. Uh, they're all dead. Uh, so uh, no one. <laughs> I don't know. Faldara, Faldara doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. It's a dead city. Like, the, the everyone... It's a dead city. Yeah. Faldara's lost. Mm -hmm. um, which I think is kind of a crazy change for the show to make. But we'll see what they do with that. I think it will happen in the books eventually, but they just, like, sped up the process. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I just think <laughs> it's, it, like, it's wild to be reading about Agamar and Amalisa and all the importance of everything that happens mm -hmm. in this stuff. And Sawan and Rand know each other and have talked in yeah. the books. And I don't see how they do that in the show. Yeah. Well, I don't see how they bring that into the show. And Marine's not allowed back at the White Tower. Yeah. And it can't channel. Like, there's just so many things that are just so different. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with it. I definitely... It was, it was interesting to see how much of the first chunk of this book is the end of season one. Yeah. Because basically, like... Mm -hmm. I think that season two is going to be book two and three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so... I don't know. It's just interesting. Yeah. We didn't see Lord Al die. He was pinned Stabbed. to a wall by a spear. A spear went th above his heart. Agamar is through dead. Through his armor. Yeah, yeah. There's no way the Trollocs left him alive. And if yeah. they did, uh, nonsense. Yeah, if he comes back, if he is alive, I'll honestly be kind of pissed. No. I'll be like, well, why would you? Yeah. Yep. Do uh, do you think Swan will come to Faldar in the show, Robert Power? Uh, maybe. Yeah, I think that if, if the I think I could see um, Moraine and Lan arriving at Faldar at the same time that uh, Swan does from the south. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but rain won't be there, so like a lot of it'll be different. But yeah, I, I, it's, I do miss the like Rand meeting uh, Swan in the the show. I, I, mm -hmm. yeah. I just, I would have liked for the him to be told he's the Dragon Reborn, and for it to be a big bigger moment than it was. Yeah, yeah, because right now it's like, well, it was most like it was going to be one of you. Yeah. Jeff South is, brings up a good point. If Lord Algamar is alive, then there are three fake out deaths in episode eight, which is not good. Not cute. And that's my problem with it. Like, they just need to leave them dead. Like, if you're going to do it, if you're going to do it, if you're going to go crazy and change things and le and kill them, leave them dead. Yeah. But don't walk it back multiple times. Don't walk back Nynaeve's death. Don't walk back Agamar's death. Don't walk... Like, Loyal's the only one that I want them to walk back because I don't know how you... It's Loy yeah, we need Loyal there, 100%. But Emilisa has to be dead and Agamar have to be dead because if they come back, then the show loses its ability to kill anybody because Tom Marilyn is going to come back. Yes. And so if everybody who dies on the show comes, comes back, back, it's just going to... it's just, like, annoying. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. it becomes it becomes sort of, like, pointless. Yeah, yeah. It's it's meaningless, and the, the show loses its the weight that it has. Like, you know, yeah. it loses the danger, um, right? This one thing Game of Thrones did so well until season eight is that everyone can die and that they are in danger. And when you walk it back too many times, it's just like... Um, Embery yeah. says, does Baalzaman make it four fake outs? No. Because ba Baalzaman isn't killed. No. He He's smiles. let go. He smiles. Like, that's not a fake out. That is the show intentionally telling us that Rand, what Rand thinks, for Rand it's a fake out. But I don't think as a show watcher it's a fake out. I no, think it is no. very, he, it's him doing something intentionally, mm -hmm. whereas the others would be kind of like unintentional. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. All right. Y'all, I think that's going to be the end of the book club today. Yeah, we will not be here next week. We are going to be yeah. in L.A. We leave on Sunday, and we are figuring all that out. But if you want to, if you're if you're like, I need my Wheel of Time, Nerdy Nightly, Clarus Polaris uh, every week, well, then we got something for you. We reacted to the Winter Dragon. Yeah, and that'll <laughs> come out next Friday. Uh, if you are a Narg of the Nerd Table, that will come up early for y'all or a member of the Patreon. Yeah. So uh, you guys will get that earlier yeah. in the week. Yeah. Uh, so look forward to that. But uh, for everyone else, Friday, 11 a.m. next week, that video will premiere. Uh -huh. And I can tell you right now, it's wild. If you haven't seen The Winter Dragon, I, I recommend watching it. It's so weird. <laughs> it's um, wild. John, thank you it's... for the John chat. Long, I thank you for the super chat. Thank you. We're going to have a blast. Um... Yeah. Uh, also, if anyone has like a higher quality <laughs> copy of that and wants to send it to me, let me know because the only one we have is in like 360. Yeah, but. yeah. If anyone has, yeah, if anyone has a copy of <laughs> The Winter Dragon that's not in 360p, yeah, we would appreciate that. Because honestly, I want to show it to everyone because it's so crazy and so cheap. Watch that reaction next week. Yeah, yeah, that'll come As out always, on Friday. Follow us around the internet. I'm at Nerdy Nightly, and I'm at Clarice Polaris. Polaris. That's the name change. Keep up with it, y'all. And as always, do something nerdy tonight. <laughs> Bye, guys. There are no Black Asha.